in Martinsville, Virginia, Ford hunting season is open. The GM drivers and crew chiefs alike have brought out their heavy artillery. And they're taking aim on the Ford winning streak in NASCAR Winston Cup racing that now totals 11. Just give me one clean shot. Just one. A direct hit was scored on Bill Elliott at Bristol that ended his win streak, but Alan Kowicki carried on for Ford. Okay, I've got him. Missed again. It turned out to be a glancing blow on Davy Allison as he overcame a spin, painful rib injuries, and an emotional week to register his second victory of the year at North Wilkesboro. Allison has a Winston Cup win at Martinsville in his sights, something that no member of his family has ever done. But the GM guys, well, they're trying to dodge the Ford bullets. Ooh, we're hunting Fords. A hunting we will go. A hunting we will go. Get ready for a shootout. It's Ford hunting season in Martinsville. ESPN, the world's leader in motorsports coverage, presents Speed World. Today, from Martinsville Speedway in Virginia, it's the Haynes 500 Winston Cup race. And it's a partly cloudy day in Martinsville. A chance of rain this afternoon and nice, cool temperatures to greet a sellout crowd here at Martinsville. Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Jenkins, and welcome to the eighth race of the 1992 Winston Cup season. A great points battle going on as we enter this event. Davey Allison is still at the top of the points list. However, Harry Gant only 86 behind, and the top five clear down to Alan Kowicki, separated by only 123 points. Now, Dale Earnhardt, the defending Winston Cup champion, is eighth in the point standings. However, the General Motors products are back. Earnhardt has qualified for an outside front row starting position. And the guy on the pole, his first since 1988 at Talladega, is Darrell Waltrip. For more on that, let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch. Thank you very much, Bob. And you're right, Darrell Waltrip back up front where he ran so many years and so many poles here at Martinville and DW. After 98 races, back on the pole and a big smile and ready to take aim at those fours. Yeah, we're uh, we're real happy to have two Chevrolets on the front row today. and. Uh, I'm, I'm just tickled to death for my crew and my sponsor and everybody that we were able to set on the pole here and, and uh, break that uh, bad luck, if you will. I think this is a real stepping stone for my team. We've needed something. Setting on the pole is no big deal to some teams, but for us it's a big deal, and, and we're real proud of it. That burning a lot of midnight oil back in Detroit, uh, all the GM teams trying to. You think you've turned it around and you're back on, the way, back on your way? Well, what, what I'm happy about the most is the commitment that uh, Herb Fischel and Mr. Perkins and everybody at Chevrolet and General Motors has to the Winston Cup program. And uh, we don't take defeat lightly. I don't. They don't. And uh, we're committed to, to excellence, as they like to say. And we got a lot of pride in what we do. And these Chevrolets will have them Ford boys whining for this year's over with. And we're going hunting, right? We're looking for the rabbit. <laughs> we're looking for the foods. We're going for the foods. Ah, uh, DW, you couldn't have two better bow tie brigaders up front than Dale Earnhardt and Darrell Waltrip with their record for General Motors. Gentlemen? Well, Jerry, with Waltrip and Earnhardt, two of the winningest drivers here at the Martinsville Speedway on the front row and four Chevrolets in the top five in qualifying here, they should have their best shot at breaking the Ford streak that they've had in a long, long time. You know, Ford has only won three races here in the last 20 years, while Chevrolet was winning 24 during that period of time, and two of Ford's wins came in 1990 when Jeff Bodine won both of the events here at Martinsville. So, Benny, it looks like maybe the Chevrolet's got a chance. I think today General Motors will come to the front, will win a race. Might be Rusty Wallace in a Pontiac, might be Harry getting a nosemobile, but I believe General Motors will win today. Benny, when you and I were racing, there was not the technology there is today. You had a lot of concerns coming in here at Martinsville about the car. Well, a lot of concerns, not only physically on the drivers, but mechanically, the brakes, the rear end, the engines. But, Ned, I think technology today has caught up with Martinsville. Well, I tell you another thing that's going to hurt some drivers who have a good shot to win, and that is pitting on the backstretch. If you didn't qualify in the top 16, you got to pit over there, and that means you got to pit after those have pitted on the front stretch. Davey Allison, our point leader, is one of those back there. Might be the best shot that Harry Gant has of taking over the point lead. Well, we talk about technology. For more on that, let's go to the pits and John Kernan. 
Well, that technology on the brakes especially has improved over the years, but brakes still the key here at Martinsville. And just to show you how important they are, Dave Marcus missed one show last year, qualified the other 28th, same car, same engine. The only difference, he put on top-of-the-line brakes and is now starting 13th. That means he is pitting here on the front stretch. And, Dave, quite an opportunity you've given yourself today thanks to technology. Well, it really has made a difference, and it all stems from some of the testing we've been doing on the IROC cars, and we've got a little bit bigger brake rotor on our car. We've got the Willwood calipers on the rear, Alcons on the front, and, uh, of course, we've got a new wheel that made all this possible. American Racing Equipment's got a new wheel out, and it gives you a little more room. So, you know, the key at Martinsville always has been brakes and still is, so we hope today that that's going to give us a little bit of an advantage. Dave Marcus, very optimistic, Bob. In fact, he won his first career Winston Cup race right here in Martinsville back in 1975. Dave, very optimistic that he can bring home a victory in the Haynes 500. He'll start the 500 lapper here at 13th position. The field is ready, and so are we. The Haynes 500 coming up on ESPN Speed World. Our coverage being brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Quaker State, the big Q is one tough motor oil. We'll introduce the 32-car starting lineup in just a moment for the Haynes 500 at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. You'd think the world would be nothing but a blur at this speed. But at 200 miles an hour, a lot of things become clear. Like what technology can help make our cars perform better? Our trucks tougher? And help make them all safer for the street? Because at Ford, we want to stay ahead in more places than just the racetrack. Have you driven a Ford lately? Hi. You know why Quaker State asked me to be their spokesman? Because I'm tough. Quaker State is tough. Tough on wear and tough on sludge. If you use Quaker State in your new car's engine, they'll guarantee it for 250,000 miles or 10 years in writing. Quaker State is one tough motor oil. So naturally, they ask me because I'm tough. You don't think it's because they think I'm oily? <sighs> We are just about to go racing at Martinsville, Virginia, and the exciting Gillette Halfway Challenge is coming up in today's Na uh, Haynes 500. The driver leading at the halfway lap will win $10,000, and a fan at home will have a chance to win a beautiful Chevrolet Lumina Z34. In addition, if you have the correct UPC code from a Gillette product, such as Right Garter Sensor, you could win an instant prize. To enter, call 1-900-436-7000. Before the halfway lap, the call will cost 95 cents, and you must be 18 years of age or older to enter. If your entry is selected and you are called at home, you must name the driver who won the Gillette Halfway Challenge Award to win the Chevrolet Lumina Z34. Cars getting up to temperature on the grid. Just about to move out for a couple of warm-up laps before we get the green flag for 500 laps of competition. The die-hard grid. On the pole is Daryl Waltrip at 92.956 miles an hour in the Western Auto Chevrolet, car number 17, his first since July of 88. Outside, Dale Earnhardt in the GM Goodrin Chevrolet, his best start in the last 31 events. Going to row number two, it's Brett Bodine in the Quaker State Ford, car number 26, and Derek Cope from Spanaway, Washington in the Purolator Chevrolet, his best start since Phoenix in 89. The third row, Ricky Rudd from Chesapeake, Virginia in the Tide Chevrolet, car number five, and hometown favorite Jimmy Hensley driving the Tropartic Ford, car number 66. Rusty Wallace starts in seventh position in the Miller Genuine Draft Pontiac, car number two, and then the number 30 Pennzoil Pontiac driven by Michael Waldrop from Owensboro, Kentucky. The fifth row consists of Alan Kowicki from Greenfield, Wisconsin in the number seven Hooters Ford, and then the Budweiser Ford driven by Bill Elliott from Dawsonville, Georgia. The 11th starting position goes to Rick Mast from Rockbridge, Baths, Virginia. The Skull Classic Oldsmobile car number one. Jeff Bodine starts next to him in the Motorcraft Cor Ford car number 15. Seventh row, Dave Marcus, car number 71. He's from Wausau, Wisconsin. And alongside will be Mark Martin from Batesville, Arkansas, in the Valvoline Ford number six. The eighth row, Harry Gant from Taylorsville, who won last fall here at Martinsville, and Ernie Urban from Modesto, California, in the Kodak Chevrolet, car number four. Those 16 drivers 
will pit on the front stretch. And now everybody behind them pits on the back stretch, including Kyle Petty, car number 42. He starts 17th. The 18th starter is Ken Schrader in the Kodiak Chevrolet, car number 25. The 10th row goes to Terry Labonte, who's third and fourth in points coming into this event, and Morgan Shepard in car 21. The 11th row, Dale Jarrett and Sterling Marlin. Row number 12, Davey Allison, current points leader, and Dave Mater the third. In the 13th row, it's Greg Sachs and Hutt Strickland. The 14th row goes to Dick Trickle and Ted Musgrave. Row number 15, the King Richard Petty with 15 wins here. Wally Dolan back alongside, and the two drivers who took provisionals to get in the field, Bobby Hamilton, car 66, and Jimmy Means in number 52. Martinsville Speedway is just a little over a half mile in length. The pole speed was 92.9 at a time of 20.371 seconds, and the field is separated by just about a half second. We'll go 500 laps here this afternoon, and there are the pits on both the front stretch and the back stretch. In terms of the banking, well, it's only 12 degrees, and it's totally flat on the straightaways. Long straightaways and tight corners. That's how Martinsville is described, and that's what we face this afternoon for 500 laps. Jimmy Hensley in the number 66 car, the Phillips 66 in-car camera, will be riding with Jimmy this afternoon. And we have a couple of others. There's the uh, shot of Jimmy as he gets set to go this afternoon. Brand new ride for this guy, and he is pumped, believe me. Mark Martin also will carry one of our in-car cameras and take a look at the electronics and the telemetry, and you'll see that RPM number go somewhere near 8,800 RPM. We'll watch for that as the race goes along. We see the cars back and forth. They're getting the tires limbered up. The second balls of the tires limbered, limbered up, getting ready for the start. 32 drivers getting set to go, led by Daryl Waltrip on the pole and Dale Earnhardt. A sellout crowd, not a seat to be had anywhere. The green flag is out and the Hanks 500 is underway. this person. Richard Petty has spun in turn number four. The car is on the grass in the area between turns three and four. No caution, however, because the car is well off the road. Now it's going to come out. The yellow is out as Earnhardt and Daryl Waltrip will come down with Earnhardt in the lead. Yeah, Dale looked like a man on a mission there on that first lap. He got a little bit behind in the second corner, but, but by the third turn, he was in the lead. And here's a replay showing you how Richard Petty got off the racetrack and down to the grass. Looks like maybe Bobby Hamilton, that's the yellow car behind Richard, might have tagged him going in the corner. It's hard to tell if there was any contact or not. Yeah, yep. we can see him getting booted by Hamilton. Uh, I tell you what, Richard just cannot get a break. Well, it's three in a row. Yep, Bristol right. early in the race, North Wilkesboro early in the race, and here on the very first lap. Richard Petty has found his way to his pit on the backstretch as the field is under caution for the first time in only lap number two. We'll take a break and be back with more coverage of the Hayes 500. Top of the line parts. Expert advice. That's your Big A Auto Parts store. Big A, the sign that keeps your car running right. Ford Truck, the best ever had. People used to go out on Saturday nights and leave their truck at home. Times have changed. Our 92 full-size pickup is still built Ford Tough. But we designed it to be more stylish outside, more comfortable inside. Now, if anything gets left at home, it'll probably be their car. More people are driving the best-built, best-selling American trucks than ever before. If you don't like the looks of your car, shoot it with Son of a Gun from STP. Shoot the dash, seats, tires, and roof. Son of a Gun protected. Man, what a difference. There's a storm brewing on ESPN. Saturday Night Thunder. 
ESPN Speed Week rolls in to start off a night of lightning quick action. Then it's the radical and the ruthless. And the rumble tumble excitement of live USAC midgets and sprints. Saturday Night Thunder strikes again on ESPN. ESPN Speed World bringing you coverage of the Haynes 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race from Martinsville, Virginia. King Richard Petty has rejoined the field after spinning on lap number one down in the third turn after being bumped a little by Bobby Hamilton. Field getting set for green again with Dale Earnhardt up front and Darrell Walter running second. Derry Cope third, Brett Lodine fourth, and Ricky Rudd is in fifth position. There was also some damage to the front of Richard's car, so evidently he hit someone in the back and then Bobby Hamilton hit him in the rear. Green flag is out. The race resumes. Jimmy Hensley working the outside line along with Michael Waltrip. It's the end number 66. Ricky Rudd to the inside. Here's the Phillips 66 in car camera. Oh, oh, Jimmy Hensley has spun and creates a huge traffic jam down in corner number four. Everybody gets through. Brett Bodine made, I believe it's Bill Elliott, maybe made slight contact with Jimmy. But everybody, for the most part, gets away unscathed. And then Hensley has gotten the car turned around, headed in the right direction. And stays in the lead lap. We shouldn't be riding with Jimmy anymore. Oh, the back of the world turned around there, didn't it, for a second? <laughs> Boy, he was going well up on the outside. That's a tough place to go early in the race here at Martinsville, but he knows this racetrack as well as anyone, and the car seemed to be working well for it. But All that effort to qualify well and get up front is kind of negated here as on lap number seven, we have Jimmy at the tail of the field. So a couple of quick cautions here, two cautions in the first six laps of competition. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Benny Hayes, and I want to tell you how to save money on your grocery bill. Shop any Hayes location now and save. Six-pack canned Dr. Pepper products, 99 cents. USDA Choice Boneless Chuck Roast, $1.29 a pound. Best Choice Biscuits, 8-ounce can, 10 cents each. Williams Country Pork Sausage, $1.29 a pound. And fresh broccoli, only 49 cents a bunch. If you want to save money, we'll help you at Hayes. Specials good this week only at all Hayes Super Warehouse at Hayes Full Service locations. Try our Matchy Touch Touchless Car Wash. Look at this dirty truck coming in. Our special chemical will get rid of the bugs. We're then going to wash your windows. We will wash off any excess mud or dirt. Next, we'll scrub your tires and rims. Look here, we're even going to wash the underside of this truck. We're then going to soap it up and rinse it off with our high pressure nozzles. Look at this truck coming out. Man, it looks like a new daughter, doesn't it? Bring your car truck in and let us work our magic on it, won't you? Ladies Day Wednesday, $2 off. Grand Prix Racing of Olympic Proportions. The Grand Prix of Spain, live from Barcelona, Sunday morning on ESPN. Nine laps have been completed, but we have not run hardly any under green. And here is the reason for the most recent caution. Watch the 66 car of Jimmy Hensley. Jimmy Hensley once again is on the outside, and Rudd goes in. Looks like Rudd hit the curb, all of a sudden his car washed up. He hits Hensley in the left rear, and around goes Jimmy and Bill Elliott in the 66 car met nose to nose. He keeps it revved up as he's spinning it around. He wants it to go all the way around like a 360. Didn't quite go all the way around. As we resume, Jimmy is uh, third, fourth from the rear. Pontiac pace car coming around and about to turn the field loose once again with Dale Earnhardt at the front. Here's the green. Earnhardt leading down the backstretch and Dr. Jerry Punch has a report on pit road. No surprise at all that Earnhardt awfully quick on the restarts and coming off of turn two and turn four. Just minutes ago, Hurts and Richard Childers the car. They really poured the gear to the car. And Childers put it that we need to run well here. We need to turn up the horsepower. We have put a lot of gear beneath this car number three, and he should be a rocket coming off the corner. 
His car was on pit road a long time this morning for an engine change, but obviously it worked. Another spin down in turn number two involves Greg Sachs as Michael Waltrip and Ricky Rudd race down the front stretch. There is a caution out. They were late in throwing it, but now the yellow comes out as Greg Sachs gets his Kellogg's car headed in the right direction. I talked to Richard Childress this morning. He's the owner of Dale Earnhardt's car. They said they looked at all the spark plugs, all eight of them. One of them didn't look exactly right. They said, with all the trouble we've had this year, we can't take any chances. They decided to go ahead and change the entire engine. While the 41 car of Greg Sachs was spinning down in turn number two. Here's what was going on between Brett Bodine and Michael Waltrip in turn three. Well, Brett was trying to get on the inside of Michael. Didn't have quite enough room. They touched. Michael slides high. And Brett, of course, does take the position. I imagine we'll see quite a bit that, of that today as the guys try to outbreak each other, get it into these very tight corners where the groove is right on the bottom of the racetrack. Boy, we just haven't had much of an opportunity to see much racing yet because it's been, for the most part, yellow. But look at the crowd on hand here. Sellout crowd, not a ticket to be had anywhere as we go to John Kernan. Dave Marcus is coming to the pits. A surprising pit stop. He had moved up and was running close to the top 10 from his 13th starting position. Must have felt that he had something wrong with a right side tire because Dave has come in, changed right side tires, and now is away. And he will drop in at the rear of the field as we get set for another restart. So we see Greg Sachs pull up on the inside. He can't do that legally. I don't know what NASCAR is going to say about it, but until there's lapping has started, you can't make it a double file restart. Here comes Richard Petty on the inside. Maybe NASCAR is going to shrug her shoulders on this one. Green flag is out again. Michael back on the outside again. And it looks like okay. ever, a lot of cars are trying the outside lane today. Yeah, Morgan Shepard tried it over there and turned to a little bit ago, and he got into the wall a little bit, but he stayed out there. Apparently, it didn't hurt the set go forward, but uh, yeah, they're getting a good bind over there. It looks like coming off of turn two in particular. Michael is losing much. He's not gaining a whole lot, but he's staying alongside of Brett Bodine. Now he has taken the position. Michael Walter moving to fourth. Brett Bodine back to fifth. Watching the battle for third and fourth position. Ooh, Michael got on the curve <laughs> coming off the second corner and almost spun the car. And Brett Bodine passes him and Ricky Rudd moves alongside. He says, son of a gun, I got to do that again then. More on Michael Walter from John Kernan. Michael feels he's got a really good chance today. Even though they had somewhat of a setback, setback yesterday morning in practice, guys, the harmonic balancer exploded in the early morning hour practice, and they cut it away. At first, they thought it was a blown engine. Well, it wasn't. They still had to change engines yesterday morning, and it cost them a whole lot of track time. But yesterday afternoon, they felt that they really had the car dialed in, and Michael was ready to run for his first. Winston Cup win. He hoped it would come right here at Martinsville. Well, many drivers have registered their first wins here at Martinsville including Morgan Shepard in car number 21. He hit the wall a little bit earlier in the back stretch, but man, he's moving now. Up on the outside, he passed Mark Martin the last time around. Here he passes Alan Kowicki up on the outside. They, he's brave. He don't mind going up there now. Here, Mark Martin, he's going to try that, but he couldn't quite make it. Up there. That's Alan Kowicki now just ahead of Mark Martin as you see the shot from the roof cam and the telemetry. Now watch the RPMs. They went up to, what, about 8,300 that time? Let's see, we're down to 63 miles. That's the slowest we saw the car now. Accelerating up to 8,600 we saw that time. That's a lot of RPMs, but if you're going to turn that many RPMs, here at Martinsville is the place to do it. You put a low gear in it, not only to accelerate off the turns, you don't turn those RPMs for a very long period of time. Michael, Michael Waltrip, Waltrip. Trouble. Waltrip spins and slides into the wall, hitting the wall with the back end of the car. So Michael Waltrip's efforts working the high groove is that, water off. From, is that water coming from underneath the car? Did he have? It looks like he has an engine or oil. Yeah, it some does. kind of fluid out of that car. Sure does. Some and here Sachs is trying to get a lap back, and he's going to do it. And Michael's car is stalled right there. Good, Sachs. heady piece of driving by Greg Sachs in that yep. Kellogg's car. It's the lap back that he lost earlier after spinning down in turn number two. 
and John Kernan has an update on Michael Waltrip. Well, I'm standing here with Bill Engel, the crew chief for Michael. What seems to be the problem? Well, uh, Michael said something happened to the engine. Something broke off the engine. Undoubtedly, it's lost all the water and oil. He's rolled out here, and we'll uh, take a look at it. Well, that's the second day in a row that they're going to have to check the engines. As we told you yesterday in practice, they had to change engines after a harmonic balancer exploded. So a very tough break for Michael Walter, who was looking really good. Yeah, he sure was, but the Pennzoil Pontiac is now behind pit wall, and the hood goes up on the car as the crew tries to determine exactly what happened that resulted in Michael spinning and bumping the wall in turn number three. A lot of caution so far in the Haynes 500. Hi. You know why Quaker State asked me to be their spokesman? Because I'm tough. Quaker State is tough. Tough on wear and tough on sludge. If you use Quaker State in your new car's engine, they'll guarantee it for 250,000 miles or 10 years in writing. Quaker State is one tough motor oil. So naturally, they ask me because I'm tough. You don't think it's because they think I'm oily. When Darrell Waltrip needs a part, he needs the right part, and he needs it fast. And when you need parts, see the parts team at Western Auto. We've got top name brands and thousands of parts in stock. Right, guys? Right, right DW. DW. And we've got the right price, backed by our low price guarantee. Right? Right, DW. And while you're here, pick up a Delco Freedom 60 battery for just $44.99. Delco batteries. It's like buying time. Western Auto, the official auto parts and service store of NASCAR. Right, guys? Right, right DW. DW. Under our fourth caution of the race at ESPN Speed World presentation of the Haynes 500, this is what happened in turn number three. Watch Michael Waltrip's number 30 car slide to the outside wall. Apparently something happened in the engine, put some oil and water underneath his rear wheels, Bob, and he spun it into the wall. And now another view from the roof cam on Mark Martin's car. Well, that's a scary thought when you go and see all that smoke because you really don't know if there's oil, water, something there that's going to cause you to spin or you don't know which way the, the other car is going to go. Michael Waltrip's car is behind the pit wall as they work on it. Meanwhile, King Richard Petty is on the racetrack after an early event incident that dropped him to the rear of the field, but he has 15 wins here at this racetrack and 30 times has he finished in the top five. There's another... Winston Cup legend, however, that has never won here at this track. Here's today's Petty Memory. This Richard Petty Memory is brought to you by the First Brand Corporation, makers of STP, son of a gun, protectant. Through the years, Richard Petty and Bobby Allison have produced many thrills for the crowds at Martinsville Speedway. While Richard won 15 times, Allison never achieved a victory during his career, usually finishing behind the king. Although at times, the Hueytown native came very close. He had some kind of a hold on me at Martinsville. I never won there, and he won there lots and lots of times. And one day, I even came really close to winning there, driving relief for him. But it still didn't. But, uh, you know, I had lots of good times with Richard Petty, and, and uh, he'd been really great for the sport. If you don't like the looks of your car, shoot it with Son of a Gun from STP. Shoot the dash, seats, tires, and roof. Son of a Gun protected. Man, what a difference. He's Stock Car Racing's all-time winner. He's Stock Car Racing's all-time most popular driver. He's the king, Richard Petty. In this new ESPN home video, The Ride of a Lifetime, Richard Petty and STP, you'll have the chance to come along with me, Dr. Jerry Punch, for a personal visit to Richard's home, and we'll show you classic video footage of Richard's greatest moments. To get your copy, call 1-800-342-3400. There's the king, and let us qualify something just slightly now. No member of the Allison family has ever won a NASCAR Winston Cup race at this track. However, both Bobby and Donnie have won in modified competition. Still under caution here at Martinsville. We'll take a quick bacon break and be back with the resumption of the Haynes 500 in just a moment. Racing fans know nothing can match the speed, power, and action of NASCAR. The best drivers in the world pushing 200 miles an hour in heart-stopping racing excitement. 
And nothing brings you closer to the action than the NASCAR video collection. Each one-hour cassette takes you behind the scenes with exclusive footage you won't see anywhere else. Get an insider's view of the developments in America's fastest-growing sport. You can start your NASCAR video collection at this special introductory price of only $9.95. Other cassettes will follow about every month for the regular price. There's no obligation. Cancel anytime. Join the NASCAR video team now. It's the inside track to America's ultimate motorsport, NASCAR. To order your first 60-minute NASCAR video, call now, toll-free, 1-800-348-2900. Use your credit card and get the special introductory price of only $9.95. Call now, 1-800-348-2900. That's 1-800-348-2900. ESPN's America's Cup 92. Dennis Conner launched a surprising comeback, but Bill Koch has his sight sets on defending the cup. Plus the Battle of the Red Boats, New Zealand against Italy for the right to be called the Challenger. The America's Cup, the Defender and the Challenger Finals tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock Eastern, live on ESPN. It is Dale Earnhardt, Daryl Waltrip, Derek Cope, Brett Bodine, and Ricky Rudd running one through five after 31 laps of this 500 lap Haynes 500. And the green flag is just about to wave again, sending the drivers back to competition. The crowd on its feet as the green flag waves. Here we go again. Obviously, Morgan Shepard, seventh in line. I'll tell you, he's been impressive. We talked about him there a little bit ago, running up on that outside. Look at him go by Rusty Wallace on the outside. That moves him to sixth place. He has come from 20. And it's all the way up to sixth. And what have we had? 10, 15 laps of green flag racing. So Morgan Shepard is definitely the man on the march. This is Mark Martin's roof camp. This Sitco Ford, car number 21. We mentioned that he picked up his first Winston Cup victory here in Martinsville. That happened 11 years ago. And Richard Haney spins right in front of Red Bodine, but he goes high. Now he's coming back down. I think everybody's going to get slowed down, though, and miss him. Ken Schrader had to take a high road to get around the car of Richard Petty, but everyone does indeed get by okay. And well, a lot of cautions last night on uh, ESPN during the modified race, and now we're having the same thing here today. No caution this time, though. NASCAR decided not to wave the caution flag, and we're back still racing under the green flag conditions. Richard just made the 360s once he got out of the way of traffic. I know he was uh, clear and track was clear, so they kept racing. Gary Cope is staying right up with second place Darrell Waldron. In fact, Cope is looking to take over second place, and Jerry Punch has more. Exactly, Bob. What a difference a year makes for Bob Whitcomb's Pure Leader Chevrolet team. You remember last year, Derek Cope did not even make the field here and had to go home, was very upset. Not only did he make the field this year, he qualified fourth, is running third and challenging for second. And a lot of that goes to the crew. Barry Dotson, who signed on with this team a few races back with a two-year contract. John Dotson, all the crew, a lot of them came from the Team 3 Racing. But the veteran crew chief, Barry Dotson, has been motivating Derek Cope organizing his team, and they feel like they're in shape right now to win, possibly as early as today. Bob? Cope with two Winston Cup wins, of course, but not in a long time, and Cope would love to win here today. And both of those wins were home super speedways at Notre Dame and, of course, the Daytona 500. Napa Field Summary showing you where your favorite driver is running at this particular moment. This is within the last lap. As the action on the track sees Dale Earnhardt putting a lap on Jimmy Means in car number 52. Cope has dropped back now a little bit from Daryl Walter. He was right on his back bumper a while ago, but now Cope has fallen back just a little bit and has Brett Bodine and Ricky Rudd on his tail. And Morgan Shepard is right there behind Rudd. He continues to work. He's running in sixth position there right now. It was one of the first Winston Cup races that I worked 11 years ago today here at this race. Morgan Shepard took home the victory. Here he 
goes up on the outside of run, trying to get on the outside, can't make it that time. Here's small talk of Mark Hart's cars. He goes by Jimmy Means out in turn three. That's Alan Lewicki in the Hooters car, direct in front. Here we see the car down to 63 miles per hour. Now we accelerate. 86, 90, 97, 108, 112, 114 miles per hour. From 73 to 114 miles per hour. In just a very short distance. A very, very short distance. Heavy on the brakes. We see him on the brakes for a long, long time. Now off. Marksville Speedway is basically two drag strips with uh, two flat turns connecting them. And uh, so that's the way it is. The turn's back 12 degrees. And these long straightaways. So they're ready to do a celebrate like Not like a drag strip, not like Kenny Bernstein would do. <laughs> Here we see the 26 car, Brett Bodine, getting alongside Gary Cope's car. This is for third spot. Kenny Bernstein's car driven being driven by Brett Bodine and Derek Cope finds himself in a position that he may not want to be in on the outside. His car is not going that well on the outside. Car is overtaking him and going away. Now we see Morgan Shepard going to try to get to the inside. He does. Rusty Wallace is right behind Morgan, so he'll try to jump right in there as well. Definitely stringing cars back there. Cope. He's either got to make the outside line work. He's going back about 10 spots. Nobody is going to let him in, that's for sure. Well, while we see all this racing going on, Dale Earnhardt is just checked out on it. Here comes Alan Kowicki around Cope. Next to do so is Mark Martin. Go down the front straight away and into turn number one. They're side by side, but Mark will get the advantage as they come off the corner, and now Ernie Irvin will come along. And then there's Bill Elliott just waiting in the wings. He might be too far back, though. Yeah, he's Derek's going to get back in this time. So he dropped from third to what? Uh, 11th, I believe. Lost eight spots just because he got hung on the outside, could not get back. And now finally he can get the inside. In practice just afternoon, that six and four cars were the two fastest cars in practice. And here goes Ernie right by Mark Martin. Ernie just took to the inside, headed down the back. Jimmy Hensley is doing as we now see the Phillips 66 roof camp. Remember, he spun earlier in the race after starting this event up in sixth position. He's now in 26th position, so he's only gained four or five spots since his spin. And, fellas, he's only about a quarter of a lap in front of Dale Earnhardt, who is catching up to him. Dale Earnhardt right now putting a lap on Dave Marcus, who had that good qualifying run. But Hensley looks back in his rearview mirror, and Earnhardt is about a straightaway behind him. Hamilton and Ted Musgrave. There's the three car almost in the same straightaway with that group of cars. Dave Marcus was so optimistic on the grid after his excellent qualifying position. However, he has made a pit stop and has lost a lap to the leader of the Haynes 500, Dale Earnhardt. It is from Kodak. It delivers the highest resolution. Microfine grain. Superior image structure. For ultra sharp detail. It is called Ektar. Ektar film by Kodak. The genius is in the details. Ektar film now comes in a new cartonless package in 25, 100, and 1,000 speeds. Introducing Ford's newest car. It doesn't have a sticker price. There's no choice of colors. And it has to be driven four times the speed limit to be appreciated. The new Ford IndyCar. If you think our technology looks impressive here, just wait till you experience it down the road. 
driven a Ford lately? If only your tires could talk. It's so tiring. He babies the car, then abuses me with messy vinyl cleaner. Hey, I'm rubber. Mm, no touch tire care. Ooh, nice foam. No touch tire care. The first product to clean, shine, and protect tires in one easy step. No scrubbing, no dirty rags, no mess. Yeah, clean and shiny. Oh, no, bad doggy. Go away. Treat your tires right with no touch tire care. ESPN brings you a new way to look at sports when you can't get to your TV. The ESPN Radio Network. Watch for us this weekend on the radio. And yet another caution out at Martinsville as a spin down in turn number two involving three cars. Derek Cope, Dale Jarrett, and... Davey Allison will show you that in just a second. Let's stand by right now and see if those running up front choose to come in for a pit stop. And several do, including Earnhardt and Daryl Walter and Brett Bodine. Here's Jerry Punch. And the lead two Chevrolets will make their way down pit road. The first time the men behind the wall have a chance to strut their stuff here at Martinsville Speedway. It's the Goodrich Chevrolet and the Western Auto Chevy of Earnhardt and Darrell Walter, respectively, should each get four tires. Earnhardt couldn't ask for a car to handle any better than he had the first few laps. They will change the tires. These are regular tires to the stagger. Very consistent. No change or alteration as they had in the old five fly days. Left side tires now going on Earnhardt's car. A little trouble with the funnel. Walter pushing on those Chevrolet. Then they're going back around to the right side of the Earnhardt car. Apparently they had a jack problem initially on the right side. So now Earnhardt, a lot of costly time in the pits due to a jack failure. Let's check into the back pit. Earnhardt leads where John Curtin is standing. John. Jerry, some quick pit, some good pit strategy by the Wood Brothers. Sitting here on the back stretch, they elected to take right side tires only. They are already away. Jerry Labonte, meanwhile, who's been moving up through the field, pulls away. He has had a four tire change and added a full can of fuel. Now we'll go back and show you why we had the caution and the pit stops. Davey Allison on the outside of Derek Cope going down in turn one. Lots of room. They go in the corner all of a sudden. They just make slight contact around those, both those cars. And Dale Jarrett has no place to go. He spins the car around. And Allison is in the back pits. Uh... Making a stop right now. And John Kernan, are you there? Bob, they're changing four tires. Now, you said that Davey stayed out. We mentioned he is the points leader. He had not led yet. So he stayed out to lead a lap, get credit for those five bonus points. Then he came in and took on four tires, and now he is away. Jerry? I want to clarify something on Dale Earnhardt's pit stop. We saw him go back around to the right side of Earnhardt's Goodwin Chevrolet with the jack again. Now, what they had done is they apparently had left the lug nut loose, and this crew, not wanting to leave any stone unturned, went back around to the right side. They dropped the jack so quick. In fact, that's what happens sometimes when you're too good, you're too fast. They dropped the jack and had already made their run to the left side and still had one lug nut that wasn't tight. So they went back around on the right side, jacked the car back up very deliberately, tightened the lug nuts once again, and let him go. Let's clarify one situation. We'll go to break here in just a second. But Davey Allison is a lap down. He could not come back in the pits there early. John Kern was on the back stretch. You couldn't see that Earnhardt passed Davey before they got back to the start finish line. He and Dale Jarrett both lost a lap on that encounter down there. We'll go back to green soon. But in the meantime, another break as we bring you coverage of the Haynes 500 from Martinsville, Virginia. can't explain it. You're kind of in a limbo zone. Time's different. Speed's different. Everything works different. It sounds totally cosmic. <laughs> it's out there somewhere. Kyle Petty and Mellow Yellow. There's nothing mellow about them. Hey, Mike. Hand me my channel on flyers. Tommy, give me that flyer over there with the blue handles. What kind of flyers is that? These are Channel Lock Tone Groove Flyers. My dad uses them on his race car, too. For the tough jobs and the small jobs, reach for Channel Lock, the handiest flyer of them all. Hey, guys, anybody seen the Channel Lock flyers? Channel Lock. Be sure you're getting genuine Channel Lock flyers. Look for this trademark. 
When Darrell Waltrip needs tires, he needs the right tires, and he needs them fast. And when you need tires, see the tire team at Western Auto. We've got major brands and over 26 tire lines to fit your car, van, or light truck. Right, Junior? Right, DW. And we got the right price, backed by our free ride guarantee. Right, Rusty? Right, DW. When you buy tires from Western Auto, try them for 30 days or 1,000 miles. If you're not satisfied, they'll exchange them. That's why I take our car to Western Auto. Right, Dad? Wrong, DW. DW takes your car to Western Auto. This is where America gets together. Every weekend throughout America, there is great NASCAR racing. I wouldn't be anywhere else. Sixty-three laps are completed in our coverage of the Haynes 500 at Martinsville. About to go back to green flag racing now after our fifth caution. And the shot from the Pontiac pace car as it pulls off the racetrack. Here we go. And Dave Mader is the leader. He didn't make a pit stop. Alan Kowicki would be in second place. Morgan Shepard with that good pit work there probably got him back out in third place. So Greg Sachs is in second place. He again made up that lap a little bit ago. He did not pit on this caution flag, so he's in second place. Kowicki, of all the cars that pitted, is now third, but he only changed two tires. Look at the tight racing as they come through turn four. Well, here's Dale Jarrett on the inside of Davey Allison going into that turn. Morgan Shepard was out there, and so was Dick Prickle, but... down through here with Jared Teddy and Trickle. Still Jared Davey out of both those cars are lapped down. They're using the cars more than they want to right now, but they need to get up front and try to get a lap back. They know this might be their best opportunity with Kowicki only taking on two tires and the nine car apparently not stopping at all. Here Kowicki goes on the outside of Mater trying to take the lead. It looks like, yes, he does take the lead, so Alan Kowicki will be the leader if he gets back around to the front straightaway. Boy, Shipley came off the second corner awfully high, and looks like he may have brushed the wall as he pulls alongside Dave Mater now, looking for a second spot. And he will take it as they go into turn one. Kowicki looks like that was pretty good strategy, Ned, taking on these two tires. Yeah, you know, he didn't take on any tires a couple of times during pit stops over there for track position. It worked well for him. It worked well for him here today. Brett Lodine mentioned during the uh, coverage of our modified race yesterday how important track position is, and it definitely is here at Martinsville. Meanwhile, Dale Earnhardt is running 14th right now. To keep track of Earnhardt, who was the leader before the caution flag, had some trouble on the pit stop, is now 14th. Once again, here's how to win. Gillette Halfway Challenge sweepstakes. Call 1-900-436-7000 before the halfway lap. Call cost you 95 cents. You have to be 18. Stay tuned to see which driver wins the $10,000 reward. If your entry is selected and you are called at home, you will win a Chevrolet Lumina Z34 if you can name the driver who won the Gillette Halfway Challenge. And you can win an instant prize if you have the correct UPC code from a Gillette product. Earnhardt is definitely on the move. He's behind Mark Martin and Ricky Rudd. Well, I'll tell you, that's tough going back there. He had, it, he had it easy out front there a while ago, but now he doesn't get the advantage of a passing flag and all of that. He's racing these guys who are running just about as fast as he is. Mark Mark gets a good grip on the outside of Earnhardt. Meanwhile, he's trying to run Earnhardt in behind the Ted Musgrave car, hoping that he can use him as a pick. Earnhardt's going to go three abreast then. Musgrave knew we was there and backed off a little bit. <laughs> and the crowd here on the front stretch goes wild. <laughs> Richard Petty was down on the grass again. Now he gets down pit road. He just keeps going. Of course, he's pitting on the back stretch. He realized he was on pit road and he slowed it down a little bit. He was going a little bit faster than he should have been. Boy, what a tough day for the King already. Here's Earnhardt underneath. Ricky Rudd trying to take that spot away. Mark Mark's going to try to come with him. He's on the inside of Rudd, and he takes his spot away.
seven to one. Looks like Earnhardt has that GM Goodrich Chevrolet running the way that uh, it used to. It used to, <laughs> yes. He is definitely going today. And meanwhile, the four car, we just saw him go out of the picture there, passed Darrell Walton on the outside, down in turns one and two, so Ernie Irvin has his Chevrolet running the way today. Punches down with Derek Cope, I think, who's out of the race. Jerry? Well, actually, Benny, you're watching Barry Dawson and some of the Pure Leader crews trying to replace the steering box, which was broken when Derek Cope came into contact with Davey Allison during the previous caution. They are working here underneath the Bob Wickham Pure Leader Chevrolet while Derek Cope sits patiently in the car waiting to get back in the race. What a tough break for Derek Cope after a great qualifying effort and a good run early on. They want to get back out and pick up some valuable points. So Derek sits while the action continues on the racetrack. Here is Greg Sachs losing positions in that 41 car. Rusty Wallace to the inside and Ernie Irvin right behind him. And meanwhile, Darrell Walton and Dale Earnhardt behind the Ernie Irvin star. There goes Ernie on the inside. DW's going to try to follow. These are awfully good race cars. Those five cars we see there. If any of those cars was to win the race, they would not surprise me at all. Seem to be pretty equally matched, although it would appear in the early going that perhaps Earnhardt's car is running as well as any. You wonder who's, who's leading the race. Kawicki's kind of checked out. Uh, all these guys back in the back when they, on the restart, he started up front, so there he goes. He's first, and Morgan Shepard is second, but about a half a straightaway behind. In third position is Dick Trickle. Then in fourth is Dave Mater, and fifth is Brett Bodine. There's Morgan Shepard in second. He feels he can win this race today in one omen. He bought lunch yesterday for some members of his crew. The lunch bill totaled $21.21. So he thought maybe that was a pretty good omen. Wow. Yeah, he must have bought lunch for about two people. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's a whole crew, and they ate cheaply, huh? <laughs> So Earnhardt takes another spot away, passes Darrell Waltrip. And Earnhardt has now moved up to the eighth spot. The top ten here in the early going of the Hames 500 at Martinsville. It's Kowicki, Morgan Shepherd, then Trickle, Mayner, and Bodine. In the second five, Irvin, Wallace, Earnhardt, Darrell Waltrip, and Mark Martin. used to go out on Saturday night and leave their truck at home. Times have changed. Our 92 full-size pickup is still built Ford Tough, but we designed it to be more stylish outside, more comfortable inside. Now, if anything gets left at home, it will probably be their car. More people are driving the best-built, best-selling American trucks than ever before. Pronto Auto Parts. From coast to coast, your local Pronto Auto Parts store features friendly service and quality auto parts at lower prices. Just a reminder, proper maintenance with AC Delco parts can significantly reduce premature wrinkles. AC Delco, it's like buying time. When you need to know about auto parts, ask the pro at Pronto. Gillette presents Sensor, the system, the technology that will change the way you shave forever. Sensor, twin blades set on springs to read your face and respond. Independent suspension to sense and adjust to every curve of your face. No other razor comes close. Gillette Sensor, for the best shave a man can get. Martinsville and the Haynes 500 here on ESPN. There's Dale Earnhardt as he continues his movement forward, and Dale Jarrett spins coming off of the second corner down in the infield grass. I'm not sure we're going to have a caution because Dale's car is off of the racetrack, and now he is moving, so we will have no caution. No caution flag. No caution flag. So Dale Jarrett loses lots of time. What happened, Ed? Did you see? He was passing Jimmy Beans on the outside, and I think they just touched a little bit. And oh, and look much. at this. 
Ricky Rudd goes around, and the caution flag is out now, Bob. The caution flag is out since Rudd is sitting up against the wall, and he's going to have to back down in traffic to get his car started. That's why they threw the caution flag. Well, he didn't hit the outside wall, but he slid up towards it, and so the yellow does come out for the sixth time this afternoon for Ricky Rudd, who started this race in fifth position. You can see the pits for the moment are closed as Rudd's car now begins to move away. The pace car picking up the field, forming the pack, and when it is formed, then the pits will open and allow anybody who wants to come in for a stop to do so. Let's take a look again at the incident as Rudd came down the straightaway, racing with several men. Yeah, there's Ooh. Schrader's in the crowd. Well, there's teammate Kenny Schrader and he get together. Remember a couple of years ago when he and Schrader crashed coming off turn two? But that was just purely racing there, all trying to go in the corner, nose to tail. So six caution periods already, and we're not quite yet to the 100 lap mark at Martinsville. For the finest catfish and seafood buffet going on around here, head on out to the Old Feed House. It's down-home delicious. Eat your fill of frog legs, shrimp gumbo, catfish filet, boiled and fried shrimp, fried chicken, homemade rolls, lots of vegetables, and tasty cinnamon rolls to boot. And it's all you can eat for one low price. From Tuesday to Saturday, pack up the family and your biggest appetite and drive on out to the Old Feed House. It's on Highway 1 South, just a half mile from the bypass. Are you shopping for a new refrigerator, washer, dryer, or other major appliance? Then shop no more. Come to Matt's TV and Appliance where you'll find a wide selection of appliances at everyday low prices. Roper by Whirlpool. Washer only $333.95. Dryer only $268.95. Gas or electric stoves, your choice, only $279.95. Roper, 25-foot side-by-side refrigerator, only $1049. At Matt's TV and Appliance, $22.23 Spence. Your best bet is at Matt's. Ends cooking up a Tuesday night special of Surf and Turf. A sizzling serving of hot summer nights is a tasty appetizer. Then move on to the main course, a hefty portion of America's favorite pastime. ESPN's Tuesday night special, Surf and Turf. Just make sure you clean your plate. Car has checked the track. They say all is in good racing condition, and so the pace car pulls off and the green flag waves again on lap number 94, and we resume the Haynes 500. Alan Kowicki is out front, running second is Morgan Shepard, and that 28 car of Davey Allison is third in line, but not on the lead lap. Dick Trickle is the car that's running third position right now, and the Snickers car. And Bob, none of these cars may pit stop. They feel like the last position is just too important to take a chance and go in and change tires. Phillips 66 roof cam on Jimmy Hensley's machine. The tires don't seem to go away quite as much here at Martinsville venues as they do a lot of other tracks, with the track being as flat as it is. And so you're right. Don't give up that track position. And Jeff Bodine spins coming off turn four. Don't look like he made heavy contact with anything. He now has, he's waiting for NASCAR. No, they don't throw the caution flag. He warned them to, but they would not throw the flag. Well, he knew that the field was way back in the back stretch. Unless he sat there for quite a long time and got lapped, there was going to be no caution. And so he pulled away and stayed on the lead lap. You know, we talked about at the top of the show that a GM car would win the race. Right now, Ned, we've got Ford, Ford, <laughs> Ford, Ford. Four Fords be the first four positions. Nice call. <laughs> well, this race got a long moment. way to go, yeah. Bet. yeah. All right, let's see how uh, Brett, Bo or rather Jeff Bodine's spun in turn four. He gets, he and his, his then goes down and hits the curb with the left front and threw the car right in the side of Jeff Bodine's car. 
The left front just caught that yellow curve. Jimmy Hensley in for an unscheduled pit stop, and that might be the contact he made with Jeff Bodine there. Might have cut a tire. The right front tire is flat on the Phillips 66 car. And there's also an obvious uh, contact that has been made with other cars as there's a mark there on the 66. On the racetrack, meanwhile, Alan Kowicki continues to lead. In fact, he has quite a comfortable advantage, although the 21 car of Morgan Shepard is not too far behind. Morgan's in second as you take a look at our Napa field summary. With Drickle in third, and then Brett Bodine and Ernie Irvin. And Hensley looks like will go another lap down as he is the car just ahead of Alan Kowicki now. Kowicki is tops in terms of Winston Cup points on short tracks this year. Kowicki came into this race fifth overall in the NASCAR Winston Cup points standings. Now Irvin takes the position away from Brett Bodine. Well, he heard Danny talk about <laughs> all those Fords up front. He said, I've got Mr. Chevrolet up here with him a little bit. Everyone kept raving about how well Ernie was running in cross in that Kodak film Chevrolet. They said, this guy is flying. Yeah, he was. He was strong. He, he really was running strong in practice before qualifying on Friday. Then he, he was the first car out. The track had sat there for an hour. And sometimes that's not the best time to qualify, especially on the short track. And he qualified. He was disappointed, as a matter of fact, with his qualifying speed. But yesterday in practice, he was very fast. Wallace is sixth, and Earnhardt is seventh. Cool, cloudy day here at Martinsville. Started off very sunny this morning, but now we have a cloud cover. There is a slight chance of rain later this afternoon, but it should come well after this event is over. But certainly it is much cooler than it was this morning or yesterday. I'm going to use one more change of letter. Cold. <laughs> it's cold out there. And it's pretty windy, and if you're out for a while, it's pretty uncomfortable. <laughs> Here's and Jeff Bodine in the pits. They're raising the hood, so I guess he has toe-in problems or some kind of problem. Meanwhile, after we watch this, Dale Jarrett goes back in the pits on the back straightaway. And from the Phillips 66 in-car camera, here is the incident in turn number four with Hensley and Bodine. Now watch. Boom. Yep, and that cut the right front down on that car. Let's get out to Jerry Punch. Well, Jeff Bodine's Motorcraft Ford still sitting on pit road. He has complained on the radio of a severe vibration in the front end of the car. And obviously, with that kind of contact you just saw minutes ago, it would have plenty of reason to expect that. They still have the hood up now. They put the hood down very slowly. They're talking to Jeff Bodine, and apparently they will push the car behind the wall. It is something they cannot fix quickly on pit road. They will try to get him back behind the wall, fix it, and get him back in the Haynes 500. And as Ned pointed out in our open, Jeff was the last driver to win. He won both events in 90. And Morgan Shepard has started to fall back a little bit. You see Dick Crickle in the Snickers Ford has caught Morgan Shepard. And meanwhile, Alan Kowicki has driven away. So Morgan Shepard is losing the handle just a little bit. Kowicki with about a half a straightaway advantage and Trickle in the Snickers Ford challenging Morgan Shepard for second position. Trickle started way back in 27. Here's John Kernan with more. Just talked with Andy Wood. He says Morgan has just decided to play it cool right now. They're running in second place on the scoreboard. They've got a pretty good position. Right now, he's just kind of laying back, saving his brakes, making sure that he has a little something there at the end. And also remember, they changed right side tires only on that pit stop. Eddie had told me earlier that they could run the left side for almost 250 laps before they would need to change those. <laughs> well, see, that's the problem with laying back. If you lay, lay back right here, you're going to get run over, Ned. You know? <laughs> that's the truth. He almost did right there. Yeah. Now he moves up to let the electric trickle go under him, and right behind them is Ernie Irvin, who is on the move. You can see that yellow Kodak film Chevrolet coming up there as those Fords run side by side. Now Morgan goes high, and right under him goes, ooh, trickle. Almost broke loose coming off the turn. Second and third place change. Trickle to second, Irvin to third, and Morgan drops from second to fourth position in about a half a lap. And Kyle Penny, his left rear tire is flat. He's going on the, in the pits on the back straightaway. There he comes. His left rear tire is flat. We can see it smoking, and there they're going to work on the tire. Mellow Yellow crew going to work on Kyle Petty, who was running in 11th position when he cut a left rear.
the top 10 after 113 laps. We'll be right back. Today, performance cars come in a variety of designs, sizes, and even prices. So do Goodyear Eagles, the world's most successful line of performance tires. There are all-season Goodyear Eagles. New ultra-performance Goodyear Eagles. There are Goodyear Eagles for the classic and for the contemporary. No matter what performance car you own, there's a Goodyear Eagle priced for you. It's another reason we say the best tires in the world have Goodyear written all over them. When you consider everything the mountains have to offer, it's not surprising why anyone would want to work up here. Come to think of it, it's not surprising why they'd want to hang around after work either. Over a million people each week walk into AutoZone, and taking care of them means having what they need when they need it. That means stocking a lot of parts for a lot of cars. Now, nobody can stock everything, but we stock more than most. And how do we know which ones to carry? That's easy. We listen to our customers, because nobody knows better about what you want than you. So the next time you walk through that door, you might think of yourself as a customer, but we think of you as the boss. NASCAR's best take on the world's fastest super speedway, the Winston 500, Sunday afternoon live on ESPN. Track facts are brought to you by Quaker State. The big Q is one tough motor oil. Whereas speed and horsepower are the critical factors on a super speedway, on a short track, it's brakes. It's not how fast you go, actually it's how fast you stop. So to learn more about brakes, we need to look no further than Bobby Allison's Raybestos Motorsports team. Let me show you. The brakes on the rear stay the same no matter where you are, speedway or short track. Usually they're JFZs. But when you get to the short track, the front, there's a big difference. Here are the smaller JFZs you use on the super speedway. But when you go to Martinsville or Wilkesboro or some of the other short tracks, you use the larger Alcons, first developed in Europe for Formula One racing. Notice the wider and thicker rotors and the big hat and the more heavy-duty calipers. That's because you actually stop a race car on the short tracks with the front brakes. Now, you can use smaller equipment, but you may end up stopping your car with concrete rather than good old reliable Ray Bestis brake pads. And there is Mark Martin, and will now, through use of telemetry, show you exactly how much he utilizes the brakes. There he is, standing on him, going into the first turn. Using the left foot on the brakes, the right foot on the accelerator. Comes off the corner all the way down to the floor, backs off, hits the brakes with the left foot. We can see what's happening to the RPM as he accelerates. Starts back up, accelerates to 7,000, 8,000, 8, Backing off. On the brakes as you're down in the corner, and back on the gas. And he gets a little more RPMs up the back straight, or at least he did the last time. Well, 8,500 quickly there, so getting off of turn two a little better than he's getting off of turn four. You see right, in, right behind Dale Earnhardt in seventh spot. Earnhardt in sixth spot, directly in front of Mark. Good shot there of the car on the track, and the foot cam on the upper right, and then the telemetry. Mark Martin. It's a Valvoline Ford prepared by Jack Roush. The leader is Alan Kowicki in number seven, and look who is about to get lapped, Harry Gant in number 33. The fellow who won the race here last September when I said there's no way <laughs> he's going to win the race. He went on and won it, but here he is about to go a lap down to Kowicki. Here's a Napa Field summary for you again as you look to see where your favorite drivers run. I wasn't going to mention that. I wasn't going to bring that up again, but he better find you again. <laughs> now, Kyle Petty is about to lose another lap. Kyle, we saw him come in for an unscheduled pit stop not too long ago, so he went at least one lap down during that. Kyle is 23rd, and Gann is now a lap down, and that means that there are, as we get an update on the standings here, 13 cars on the lead lap. And there is Mark Martin and Dale Earnhardt as they lap together. He's passing Earnhardt on the outside. 
so Dale Earnhardt's car not handling as well as it was earlier in the race, that's for sure. Or Martin's car is handling better, right? I'd say Earnhardt's just not handling quite as well because he's not running the speed that he did a little bit earlier. There's Derek Coke back out on the track after a lengthy stage. On his car after a spin. Here's the boot camp for Mark Martin. And Morgan Shepard, he's pitted on the back. He only changed two tires on this last car. When he made his pit stop, his only pit stop of the day. And Mark Martin changed four tires. That's one reason right now that Martin's car is a little bit faster than Morgan's. And we can see him go by on the inside. Well, we talked about those who won their first races here at Martinsville included in that group. Jeff Bodine, who scored his first win in April of 1984. Jerry Punch has caught up with Jeff Bodine. Thank you, Bob. We're with Jeff Bodine. And Jeff, unfortunately, an early day for you here at Martinsville. What happened up there? Looks like we broke a ride, Jerry. Uh, the engine just uh, shut down down the back straight away. And there's a dent in the oil pan and some stuff coming out the bottom. Usually that's a ride break. It could be a ride tap or a uh, bolt. We don't know. Exactly what we didn't want to happen this year. We didn't want any failures, any DNFs. Uh, but in this business, realistically, you have to look at maybe three, four in a season. Maybe this will be our first and last, but the car was running really good. It was handling good. You know, we got turned around, uh, and even after that, it was still running good. Really lucky we didn't hit the wall any harder than we did. The car was handling great. It would have been a good run for the motorcraft car, but uh, here we sit it. I, I love this place. I love racing here, and I hate I hate watching races here. I'm going to go in the trailer and not watch. Just take a nap, I guess. Jeff put out a three-top winner mark. And we do have a lot of action, Jeff. You might want to stick around. The action's good. We saw a spin down there in turn number one, and it resulted in something happening to Dick Trickle's car. Yeah, he almost spun going into the turn down there, Bob. He was in some traffic where they got tempered or whatnot, but anyway, Trickle dropped back to fourth place from his second place position that he was running in. They went the corner three abreast. Trickle on the inside, Rick Mass on the middle, and another car on the outside. Trickle and Mass made contact. Trickle almost won. Rick Mass did make the 360, but he got the car going before NASCAR threw the car from it. And Michael Walter returns to action after a lengthy stay behind the wall. The Pennzoil Pontiac returns to competition. And I thought Trickle had a flat tire after spin because he came around and went through three and four slowly, but that was three or four laps ago. He now is up to speed and seems to be running as well as ever. Still running fourth, not too far behind him is Rusty Wallace. And this car, Mark Martin, directly behind Rusty. Between Rusty and Trickle is the car number 16 of Wally Dolan, right? Of course, he's not on the lead lap. He's in 24. There is uh, Sterling Marlin and Dave Mader in car number 9 and Terry Labonte. This is back in ninth, 10th, and 11th position. Dave Mater, 22 car, Sterling Marlin is 9th, and 94 is 10th, and the 17 car, Darrell Walter, is 11th. The 9 car of Mater, uh, he started up front just a little bit ago, but he had not made a pit stop, did change tires, so with those worn tires, he now has went a lap down to his car. Wickey continues to lead in the Hooters Ford. We talked about the General Motors products starting up front, but it has been Alan Kowicki leading this race for the last several laps and maintaining a rather healthy advantage on second place. Yeah, he's now is held by Ernie Irving. And he's pulling away from Ernie. We see Ooh, we've got to go all the way back to there, there to find Ernie Irving in the Kodak Film Chevrolet, the second place car. That's Ted Musgrave in the 55 car, the Jasper engine. Automobile right directly behind Ernie. Ted Musgrave carrying one of our in car cameras. His car sponsored by Freedom Village USA, which is a residential home for troubled teens founded in 1981, located just north of Watkins Glen, where we will be later in the year. And also uh, a sponsor on that car is Save America Youth. And each time that uh, Ted Musgrave competes in a NASCAR Winston Cup event, a couple of children from these homes are on the pit crew. Ted Musgrave in car number 55. We're at Martinsville, Virginia for the Haynes 500. There are your top five after 156 laps. Hi. You know why Quaker State asked me to be their spokesman? 
Because I'm tough. Quaker State is tough. Tough on wear and tough on sludge. If you use Quaker State in your new car's engine, they'll guarantee it for 250,000 miles or 10 years in writing. Quaker State is one tough motor oil. So naturally, they ask me because I'm tough. You don't think it's because they think I'm oily. There's a way to virtually guarantee a safer suspension system. A way to eliminate pulling, shaking, and loss of control. It's the suspension technology of Midas. Diagnostic tools so advanced, they can pinpoint the problem. So you know your car's fixed. Absolutely right. And for a limited time, buy one Shocker Strut, get the second for 50% off. For a safer suspension, nobody beats Midas. you're looking to quench a serious thirst. There's nothing like the tangy, citrus taste of squirt. Give your thirst a squirt. Regular or diet. Every summer weekend, millions of the smartest guys in America fire up their Murray Moors. What makes them so smart is that Murray's rated one of the best in quality and performance with a two-year warranty backed by 10,000 service dealers at a price that's about half of other top quality mowers, which makes Murray mowers tough as they come, any way you cut it. The time has come for the cordless power roller from Wagner. It's so quick and easy it can cut painting time in half. So get your hands on a real value, because the value of Wagner keeps on rolling. Bob Jenkins, Ned Jarrett, Benny Parsons, John Kernan, and Dr. Jerry Punch back at the Haynes 500 in Martinsville, Virginia. We are nearing the 200 lap mark, and Alan Kowicki in the Hooters Ford car number seven is the leader of the race. There are currently 13 cars on the lead lap. Michael Waltrip, as we told you a few minutes ago, has rejoined the race. He's many laps down because of a lengthy pit stop. The Pennzoil Pontiac is running, and right behind him is Ricky Rudd in car number five, who has gone a lap down. Yes, Kowicki just, uh, he might have put him two laps down. I don't know. Uh... And there's Dave Marcus in the 71 car. Qualified well, had big hopes, but lost a lap early with an unscheduled pit stop. And also many laps down is Derry Cope in the uh, Pure Later car. He had a good qualifying effort, but is out of contention in terms of a win. Here's the nine of Dave Mater the third, and right behind him is Davey Allison. Allison had a spin earlier, lost a lap. He's the NASCAR Winston Cup point leader, but he lost a lap in the, in the spin, is now a lap down. Harry Gantz a lap down in the Skull Bandit Oldsmobile. That car just not working as well today as when he dominated the race here last September, the Goodies 500. There is the second place car of uh, Ernie Irvin. It shows you how much of an advantage that Alan Kowicki has on the field at the moment. Bill Elliott has gone on to pit road. I wouldn't say this is an unscheduled stop, Bob. There's a lot of cars beginning to slip and slide out there as he changes the right side tires on the Budweiser board. They're also going to change the left side tires. I think we'll see other pit stops here coming up before too long. It was sort of a last-minute decision, though. Four tires, four tires. That's unusual that they would change four tires, but evidently the car just not handling the way Bill wanted it. And Kyle Petty is coming off the second corner as he leaves. He's going slow, slow. He's got a right front tire flat. I think he may have bumped the wall over there in turn two or on the back stretch. In any case, he tries to get the car to the inside of the track. And Rusty Wallace going very slow up the back stretch going into turn three. It's like Rusty's out of gas or something. I don't know. Here's well. what happened to Elliott as Kowicki came up to lap him. Kowicki's on the outside in the seven car. And Elliott just goes, slides up the racetrack. I guess he got in the corner too hard trying to stay in front. And he just comes to the pits. He said, hey, these tires are not gripping. I'm going to the pits. And the caution is out. And Rusty Wallace behind the wall. Evidently, he's lost an engine and has went back behind the wall. One of those in the top five, in fact, uh, was running in fifth position. Rusty Wallace brings the Miller Genuine Draft Pontiac behind the wall as we're experiencing 
another caution period. The field pack being formed, and here comes the leader, Alan Kowicki, in, and uh, Kyle Petty pinning on the back stretch. Here's Jerry Punch. And the Hooters crew going to work on Alan Kowicki's for Thunderbird. He would have fitted by scheduling around lap 200, or about 20 laps early, if they don't mind, because the cars were beginning to slip and slide. Bob, as you had said earlier, they now change right side. They have changed left side tires. The four car, the Kodak crew, the Chevrolet crew, Tony Glover, they're working now on the left side. Jack, the left side up of earlier. Kowicki's car down on the way here. Put it back in gear. Looking down pit road, you see a lot of activity down pit road. The Valvoline crew now working on Mark Martin's car. Here is Ernie Irvin moving to the right. He will move down pit road. And now, once again, Mark Martin off the jack, and he too will make his way back to turn one. Irvin out second, then comes Brett Bodine, Dale Earnhardt, and uh, Darrell Walter have just made it out ahead of Martin. Here's John Kernan on the backstretch. Well, a break for the Wood Brothers. They had gone only right side tires last time. The car was beginning to fade on those worn left side tires. They were going to come in and pit in 10 laps anyway, and they had got a big break here as they were close to losing the lap to... Uh, Alan Kowicki was running so well. It's a four-tire change for Morgan Shepard. Gets out. Any one of those said because of the caution, their strategy of doing two tires earlier still was the right call because now there are, what, 12, 13 cars on the lead lap? 13 when we went to caution, and as they came out of the pit area here on the main straightaway, watch the collision, or at least a near collision, involving Darrell Waltrip and Mark Martin. Field under caution as everybody has now received new tires and gas. We're getting set for another restart in the Hayes 500 at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. Be right back. We got a problem. Any ideas? I've got a contact center. Well, get on it then. Get him here now. For a while. Nice job, sir. With years of training, Napa Auto Care technicians provide a secret service everyone should know about. All of these championship winning drivers have one thing in common Goodyear Racing Eagles. The race winning technology that's found in the Goodyear Racing Eagles can also be found in the world's best selling line of high performance street tires. Goodyear Eagle Street Radials. The champions know, and it's why we say, the best tires in the world have Goodyear written all over them. Thursday night, ESPN sets them up and knocks them down. the punches on ESPN. First with the women of the ladies pro bowlers tour and then with the hard hitting action of top ranked boxing. Knockdown Thursday ESPN. Hey! Green flag racing back at Martinsville as Alan Kowicki leads Ernie Irvin at just about the 200 lap mark out of 500 in the Haynes 500. In third position, not too far behind these guys, is Dale Earnhardt. Fourth is Brett Bodine. And fifth is Darrell Walter. This is something I've been wanting to see for about the last 100 laps because Ernie and Alan seem to be the cream of the crop. I wanted to see what they could do with four fresh tires, nose to tail. And it looks like Alan is a little bit quicker than Ernie right now. Rusty Wallace is out of the race, and Jerry punches with him. After running the top five most of the day, Rusty, you're behind the wall. What happened? Ed Burnham bearing an engine. Uh, car ran great. It was really running well, and all of a sudden, the caution flake flew. And when the caution flew, at the very same time, the engine locked up, and I shoved the clutch in and didn't blow it, but it seized the thing up. So it was handling good. The Miller Genuine Draft car is doing fine, just we can't get that rhythm yet. But everybody hang in here with us, because we'll get it. It's just slow coming. Rusty Wallace calls it a day here at Martinsville, Pop. Huh? And the battle rages on for first position as Irvin pulled to the inside and tried to challenge Allen for the top spot. Coming on four, but Allen maintains the lead. The Grand Marshal of the Haynes 500 here at Martinsville this weekend is the outstanding quarterback for the Cincinnati Bengals, Boomer Esiason. He's joined us in the booth. Hi, Boomer. How you doing, guys? All right. Good. Great. Enjoying it? 
This is, uh, this is unbelievable for all those race fans who've never actually seen a race like myself in person until this time. You got to come out here and see this. This is uh, this is one just uh, basket full of excitement. I'll tell you, this, this is unbelievable. This is a two-minute drill every lap, isn't it? Well, I'll tell you, these drivers they have to concentrate every step of the way. If, uh, once this concentration, especially on a small uh, track like this, you know, being that they're bumping and grinding the whole time coming through these turns, I mean, can lead to a dangerous accident. You know, I'm glad to hear you say that because so many times when uh, we talk about athletes, race drivers are not considered as such, but they really are, physically and mentally. Well, uh, you know, there, there's no question that they have to be of sound mind and body to be able to perform like this. And I don't think people really can get a true appreciation of just how fast these cars are going and how dangerous this sport is unless you come and see it in person because you know, for the first time being this close has really been an eye-opener for me. And you know, on our TV here, we can see the telemetry and the RPMs of the engine turns and the speed down here in the lower right-hand corner can you imagine going from 63 miles an hour which is about as low 62 that time accelerating up to about 114 or so miles an hour before slamming on the brakes and doing it all over <laughs> well well Bob I happened to be in the pace car prior to the start of the race and it was a convertible and we were only doing 50 miles I can't even tell 50 miles an hour, I can't even tell you how many G's we were pulling around these corners so uh, you know it gave me a greater sense of appreciation for what these drivers actually go through This is inside Mark Martin's car. The foot cam, also telemetry, as he is behind Daryl Walker. Walker behind, there's Daryl. Daryl is fifth and Mark is sixth. And Brett Bodine is fourth, the green car direct in front of Daryl. There you go. That's Bill Elliott on the outside, who is a lap down to this group of cars. Elliott had just made a green flag pit stop before the caution came out. In fact, he might be two laps down, Benny. They changed four tires. And Dick Trickle not too far behind that group. Let me see. Yep, he is two laps down, Ned. You're right. Now, Boomer, how was it you were chosen to be the Grand Marshal of this event? Well, I actually do uh, some endorsement work for Haynes Underwear. I'm the guy that you might see out of his uniform, but in his briefs on TV. Oh, my goodness. Is that you? That's <laughs> Keith. I'll tell you, it takes a hard time, too, to get back in shape for those commercials. But, uh, you know, really, so Haynes asked me to come down and be the Grand Marshal. Last year it was Steve Largent, I believe, and he also does some work for Haynes. And the great people at Haynes who support this uh, this racetrack and this race has done such a good job. And they offered me the opportunity to come down. I said, sure, why not? That's Dick Trickle. Move back up behind Mark Martin, Davey Allison, the Havlin Star Card. Hey, guys, now this, he is a lap down. Fans, if you just join us, Davey Allison is a lap down. Spun earlier. His car is quick, but he can't get that lap back. He has led every race so far this year, but now he has not led this race today and certainly is in jeopardy of not leading it as a result of being a lap down. And Bill Elliott is also a lap down to the field. We're getting closer to the halfway point to enter the Gillette Halfway Challenge sweepstakes. Call 1-900-436-7000 before the halfway mark. Call will cost you 95 cents. You must be 18 years of age or older to enter. You're called back, and you can name the driver who won the Gillette Halfway Challenge. You'll win a Chevrolet Lumina Z34. You can also win an instant prize for having the correct UPC code from a Gillette product. Gillette Halfway Challenge is coming up about 39 laps from now. This guy's the worst you've ever seen on Matt. He did get that correct, <laughs> but yeah. Hey, Boomer, you can use our phone if you want to go try to win that thing. Yeah, try to win. <laughs> <laughs> How the Bengals look this year? Well, uh, we should be pretty interesting. Uh, you know, we had the draft, and uh, we drafted David Klingler, quarterback out of Houston. So who knows what uh, our coaching staff has in mind. I, I thought that maybe we would have taken a defensive player, but uh, they probably felt that he was the best player in the draft at that particular point. So and we can only get better. We know last year we were 3-13. and 13. Uh, you know, Dale Jarrett wore our helmet uh, going into this race, and Dale's now out of it. I could have told him, hey, look, you might want to put that helmet aside <laughs> and wear Joe Gibbs' Redskin helmet. <laughs> well, you weren't quite as bad as uh, my Indianapolis Colts, but uh, we hope for a better season from them, too. There's the leader, Alan Kowicki. Jerry Punch is down on Pitt Road with an update on Ricky Rudd. Unfortunately, the attrition rate continues to climb, Bob. Ricky Rudd currently 10th in the point standing, sitting in the car behind the wall. Gary Dehart and the rest of the tight crew beneath the rear of the car, as you see, they are replacing the gear. Dehart says apparently something broke in the gear, and they uh, the car just wouldn't pull. They're going to put a new gear in it, try to get him back out and try to maintain some standings, hopefully in the top 15, at least the top 20 in the point standings. But right now, Ricky Rudd must sit and wait patiently inside his Chevrolet. A year ago, Rudd was atop the quest for the cup. 
but it has been a disappointing 19-92. Labonte and uh, Shepard here going for position. That's the eighth spot. Labonte has it. Morgan Shepard wants it. He's ninth. In the 25, Dark Kenny Schrader, he's 10th. And another auto light field summary for you. You can watch and see where your favorite driver is running at this particular time. This is within one lap right now. Shepard went high there, and Schrader got by, and there's Sterling Marlin about to go by Shepard as well. And there's a whole bunch of traffic ahead of the leader, Alan Kulwicki, as he comes off of turn number four and sees Bobby Hamilton and Richard Petty and Dave Mater and Ted Musgrave and Rick, Rick Mast, Mast all ahead of him. Now, Ernie Irvin hasn't been able to do anything with Kulwicki when they were running out by themselves. In fact, Kulwicki looked like he was pulling away a little bit. Let's see what he can do with him in traffic. Probably not much. He closes up right on the back bumper. Well, I said on the back bumper, three car lengths. Looks like the back bumper. Wait, Glick has been running. The hood on the right side of that four car is bowed as it is on the 33 car. We noticed that a little bit earlier. And, uh, something hasn't connected right on the hood. Probably had a little bump out there somewhere and uh, knocked the front end up a little bit. It doesn't affect the running or handling of it. Hamilton going by the Mater car. I thought he moved over to let the seven car go by, but instead he went by, and that's what happened. Ernie Irvin to close up right on the back bumper off Kowicki. Now he is on the back bumper, that's for sure. Hamilton wants to stay in front as long as he possibly can in case the caution comes out. He gets to go all the way around the racetrack. And there he's going to go by. Rick Mass moves over to let the leaders go. Hamilton takes advantage and dives on the outside. Here comes Ernie on the inside. Got position. That's about all. Who are you pulling for? Who are anybody in particular? Well, I'll tell you, I have uh, some friends that are in the Maxwell House crew and also the uh, Budweiser crew, Bill Elliott and uh, Sterling Marlin. So I had a chance to talk to uh, Sterling this morning and gave me a, a once over of his Maxwell House car. So. I would imagine uh, since uh, Dale Jarrett is not racing in this race any longer that those two would have to be my favorites, along with obviously the king, Richard Petty, who I might add, when I met him, I had a little weak knee, you know, meeting a legend like that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of amazing. He's quite a guy. He sure is. 224 laps have been completed, and Alan Kowicki continues to lead, holding off the challenge of Ernie Urban. Earnhardt is third, followed by Brett Bodine. We'll be right back. I love this car. Everything on it's original. Over the years, I've picked up a few chips and scratches on the windshield. <laughs> Lucky I heard about Novus. Novus repairs chips and cracks for a fraction of the price of a new windshield, and you keep the factory seal so no chance of water leaks, wind whistling, or squeaking. Sure, Novus will install a new windshield if necessary, but never replace original equipment unless you absolutely have to. Novus windshield repair, because there's no seal like a factory seal. We at the Front Page Cafe want to offer our customers only the freshest food possible, but we also like to keep costs down, so we go that extra mile to do it. There's more. Grilled to perfection. Sometimes we go two extra miles. Cafe, but it's worth it. Cafe, where the memories fly by and the rolls do too. 236 out of 500 laps are completed in the Haynes 500 at Martinsville. The top five, Kowicki, Irvin, Earnhardt, Brett Bodine, and Daryl Waltrip. Our Speed World coverage being brought to you by ESPN Home Video, producers and distributors of Richard Petty and STP. And by Goodyear, number one in tires. At the Haynes 500, it is Alan Kowicki who is still leading as we near the halfway point. Ernie Irvin still running about five, six car lengths behind. Well, we've been talking with Boomer Esiason, the uh, Grand Marshal of this event here in the booth. And before we do any more talking with him, we want to show you what he and Benny did here at Martinsville recently. You are not going to believe this one. Well, Benny, I got to tell you, I got an excellent opportunity here to work with you. And you being the 
stature that you are in the race world and me and Jim Riggs as uh, football players, we can really help you lose that little extra poundage you got around your your you noticed there. that, huh? I noticed that. I, I heard that you've been uh, one to belly up to the buffet every now and then. I that busted true? a few or two, yeah. Okay, well, good. I'm going to put you through a workout through Jim because I'm going to tell him what to do. That's what I usually do on the football field, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to lose some of this stuff. I'll keep the ball down here. Okay? All right, sounds good. All righty, Jim. All, All right, right, let's, let's go. go do it, man. Okay, Benny. The first exercise is going to be the ropes. This is going to be used to warm you up before we get into the heavy stuff. You ready? Just watch Jim, and you do the same thing. Okay. Go, Jim. Go, baby. Look at those feet move. Look at those feet move. Okay, Benny. Here you go. Go, it. baby. Come on, Benny. Come on, Benny. Come on, man. Come on. You can do it faster. All right, okay, baby. Benny. Our next exercise is going to be hitting a tackling dummy. The object here is to stay in a three-point stance and to hit it nice and low and explode up into it and hit it to the ground. So watch Jim. Jim's going to go on set. Down. Set. <laughs> That's the way to hit it. That's a real football player hitting okay. a real bag. So now it's okay. your turn. It's on set, Benny. You ready? Okay. Down, set. Oh, man. <laughs> you okay, man? So. Next exercise. Okay. Let's go, man. So let's see if he can catch one of the heaters that I throw to him. First, Jim Riggs. Okay. Okay, Benny, you ready? I'm ready for it. Jerry Rice, my foot. <laughs> I didn't I think so. Fast, How about some donuts? There, now he really becomes the next Jerry Rice. All right, way to go. <laughs> Boomer and Benny, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Benny, oh, thanks for being such a good sport. <laughs> oh, man, that was uh, so much fun. That now, was, Benny, tell the fans, really, you, you really dropped that ball. You weren't really trying to catch it, were you? Hey, I, I had it. I mean, no, I was, I was just wanting to look like an idiot, like I normally do. But They, uh, they didn't call him... Uh, fingers for nothing when he was <laughs> driving race cars. I'll tell you, though, I had a good time doing that. You know, the, the folks here at Martinville have really been wonderful, so. And we have a fire in one of the cars. Looks like it's uh, Wally Dollenbach. Wally Dollenbach. Five laps, by the way, to the halfway point. This is in the pit area on the back stretch, so does not have any effect on what's going on in the racetrack. And Alan Kowicki is almost completing lap 246, and now there are four more laps to the halfway point. It looks to me like someone told Ernie Irvin, look, the halfway point is four laps from now. It's 10,000 bucks because, look, he's closing up on the back bumper of Kawiki. Irvin will get it or get a run here at it. Boom, you think that four car can catch a seven? Uh, well, I like the seven, you know, parcel number seven. So, okay. You know, it's Almost your color, too, right? Right, you know, and orange I, and white. <laughs> Almost. And plus, it's, you know, it's the Hooters car. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Three more laps. Win. I see that fire in the pit. You know, I can't ever remember the last time I came to the sideline had a fire on the sideline. So, it's <laughs> a whole other thing you got to deal with. They use the brakes so much that they build up so much heat that they just literally catch on fire. That's more prevalent on a small track like this. Is that not right? Exactly. Flat tracks where they use the brakes so much. Look, he is one car length away. A lap and a half to go. 10,000 bucks. And they're coming up on traffic. Boomer, if you get a chance, watch us next uh, Sunday afternoon at Talladega, which is a little over two and a half miles. And there, under ideal conditions, you just stand on the gas and go around it and uh, never even touch the brake. It's quite different than this kind of racing. The nice thing about this racing, though, is the intimacy in which the fans are right on That's top true. of the uh, on top of the track. Yep. Here we go. Here's Alan Kowicki coming off to turn number four, and there is the halfway point. Our leader at the halfway point is Alan Kowicki. He takes home $10,000 in the Gillette Halfway Challenge Award. If you've entered the contest and are called back and you can correctly identify him as the winner of the Gillette Halfway Challenge, you could win the Chevrolet Lumina Z34. Alan Kowicki, the leader at the halfway point here at Martinsville. And look, it looks to me like Ernie Irvin has backed up two car lengths since the halfway point. He tried to win that 10 grand. When he couldn't do it, he's going to save his car now. I tell you what, that four car is good, Ned. Yes, it is. He ran up on the back of that seven. He was impressive catching the wiki. Yeah, we see Dale Jarrett's back out there after being in the pits for about two. And here's the battle for laps. fifth position as Dick Trickle takes fifth from Daryl Waltrip. They've been running together for the last few laps, but Waltrip has been ahead. But now Dick Trickle takes the position away from Daryl Waltrip. Boomer, thanks for stopping by and uh, appreciate your... Uh, Efforts there with Benny yesterday. Well, I appreciate it too, <laughs> and just thanks to all the folks in Martinsville for making my stay so hospitable. And good Ed, luck, thank you very much. Sense. Okay, good, good luck to the Bengals, Bengals this year. Thank you Jim, very much. Right. Boomer Esiason, the Grand Marshal of the Haynes 500.
Here we see Trickle. You know, uh, I met one of the Mars family that he sure can attend to stay in Martinsville watching the race. I think it was Frank Mars. Boy, he's your Mars. kind of guy, huh? The Mars candy bars. <laughs> Try to hit him up with some samples. He didn't have any on him. And John Kern has a story on Darrell Walters promise. John? Well, Benny, we just saw Dick Trickle pass Darrell Walter for the fifth position. Darrell, of course, the master, taking it easy in this race, and in the last hundred laps, he tries to make his move. One interesting point, the week before last, he was down here with a brand new car, testing it out. That's the car that he set on the pole for today's race. The last time he brought a brand new car here to the Martinsville Speedway, he won the race. Started on the outside of the front row next to Dale Earnhardt. That was when Hurricane Hugo moved through here back in 1989. He won that race. He feels very confident today about winning this race he's gonna wait until afterwards before he decides to name the car now where did Hugo go you might ask well they reskinned it and sold it to Dale Jarrett and that's the car Dale Jarrett is driving out there today with a new snout on it Walter was a matter of fact running both those races at Martinsville in 1989 and in all he has won 11 times on the Martinsville Speedway this is his 35th start and eighth pole position 23 times Daryl Walter has finished in the top five here at Martinsville. This is his kind of racetrack. But it is Alan Kowicki who is still leading and about to lap Morgan Shepard, who at one point was running up in the top five, but has since dropped back to 11th position. Kowicki leads Ernie Urban at Martinsville. It's the Budweiser Pit Stop with Bill Elliott. Hi, I'm Bill Elliott. Safety is a major concern for everyone associated with NASCAR. In recent years, we've made some big strides. For instance, this suit is fireproof. It has three layers of insulation, will keep flames off a driver for at least 15 seconds. During a race, I also wear fireproof gloves and special fireproof shoes. Then there's my helmet. The inside is high quality, shop absorbing foam material. Drivers wear a lot of protective clothing during the race. Like they say, it's better to be safe than sorry. Here we go again, guys. Wow! I feel good. Yeah, this guy really gets to ride. He's got the auto lights. American or import, we're guaranteed. I feel good. Yeah, two years, no matter how far he goes. That's why we've been everywhere. Ow. Vegas. I feel good. Yeah. Daytona. I would now. L.A. Wherever we're going. Yeah. And we're not even tired. Mark and my relationship goes way past business. Um, I'm sure in a previous life, he and I were twin brothers. Throughout the race, the driver and crew chief communicate. The driver complains about the car or brags about the car. It's the crew chief's job on pit stops to make whatever fixes he can to help the driver's predicament. Everyone has about the same access to equipment and technology, but the people who rub on it the most and think the most of it and think about it the most will end up winning the race. Welcome back to the Haynes 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race from Martinsville, Virginia, where Alan Kowicki is the leader. Coming up next here on ESPN after this race, we'll take you live for the St. Louis Cardinals and the Los Angeles Dodgers on, Mon on Monday Night Baseball. That's at 10.30 Eastern time, right after our race, the Cardinals against the Dodgers. And tomorrow at 3 o'clock Eastern time, live from San Diego, ESPN's coverage of America's Cup 92 continues with the Defender and Challenger Finals. That's tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock Eastern Time. Well, Kowicki has led the most laps here at, North, at uh, Martinsville as he has the last two races at North Wilkesboro and Bristol. Second position belongs to Ernie Irvin in the number four car. He's been in second position for the last many, many laps, but has not been able to wrestle away the lead from Kowicki. The tied Chevrolet we see behind Ernie Irvin is several laps down. Here comes the black car. There is uh, Dale Earnhardt. He is currently third. He's staying about consistent, isn't he, man? Yeah, he has been about two and a half seconds behind Kowicki. He was leading and just stayed about that distance. Gene Goodrich Chevrolet started second this afternoon outside of the front row. Bobby Hamilton in the Country Time Oldsmobile behind Earnhardt. There's Kyle Petty. Here he can. Again, not running very well this afternoon. Morgan Shepard. 
And there comes the next car, the fourth place car, Dick Trickle, the Snickers Ford. And a great run for Dick. He started 27th, but has been in the top 10 most of the day and in the top five a lot And the leader's in trouble. Something's wrong with Kowicki. Kowicki's car slowed coming off the fourth corner. He has... Ernie Irvin has went by for the... He has the lead now. Earnhardt is on the outside, and he goes by, and... Kowicki going very slowly down the back stretch. I believe he's right front tires. The left, the left the water, rear, something's wrong with the left rear, isn't it? Well, isn't it? It's like okay. the hover. We'll see. He's coming into the pits, whatever it is. Let's go to Jerry Punch. Well, Alan Kowicki had radioed in. He thinks he has a flat tire, but he didn't know either which one it was. So the crew now going to work on the right side. The only option they have is to change all four tires. Unfortunately, under the green, it'll cost him a lot of valuable time. Right side tires have already been changed. The Hooters Ford now crew working on the left side, changing left side tires. Kowicki upset. Nothing he can do. He's waiting for the go. Now the deck, remember, just 35 miles an hour down pit road. And because of that, Jerry, I believe he's going to lose two laps because here comes uh, Irvin off of corner number four. It's going to be close. Allen lost one lap while he was in the pits and is going to come very close to losing two but will not lose the second lap. Now, something's still wrong with the car. Yeah. The car is not at speed. Now here comes Irvin sneaking up behind him and threatening to put him two laps down. Yeah, Allen's car is still just not working. Kowicki goes two laps down, and I believe he's going to be black flag for going too fast down pit road. 35 is the speed limit. Here is what happened to Alan Kowicki moments ago. He goes in the corner in three, and the car just goes up the hill, and there goes Ernie Irvin by to take the lead. Jerry, what happened to the car? Do you know? Now they are speculating, Benny, that he may have broken an axle in the car number seven. Only he only has uh, one wheel pulling coming off the corner. That's why he's not back up to speed. The crew now getting set to bring Ellen Quickie behind the wall. And what a tough break after this car being so dominant on the short track the past couple of races at Bristol and Wilkesboro had this problem happen. They are waiting now for Quickie to bring that car behind the wall and take a look at the rear end area. Man, what a tough break for Quick. You know, last week at North Wilkesboro, he led the most laps, but at the end of the race, faded. The car started pushing, couldn't do anything. And here this afternoon, he's getting the black flag right now. And Ernie Irvin is the leader. So Chevy is up front. I mean, it's almost like the tease of the show that someone was up there and boom, shooting at him, huh? shooting at him and got Kowicki. And here's an interesting statistic. This is the first time that Ernie Irvin has led a lap in 1992. The last time he was in front was at Atlanta, the last race of 91. Kowicki has brought his car in, put it behind the wall. You can see it there as the crew goes to work on it. Tough break. You know, these cars anymore with the radial tires, they're running special rear ends. They're running cambered rear ends. They run, they tilt the, ends, the top of the right rear end, the top of the left rear out to try to get more traction on the rear tires on some of these racetracks. And that puts a lot of abuse on the axle shaft and the axle flange, the thing that drives the car. And I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if one of those problems did crop up for Kowick this afternoon. Urban has about a uh, about a quarter, half a straightaway advantage on Dale Earnhardt. Then it's almost like when Kowicki fell out that Dale Earnhardt's car started slowing down as well because he's losing ground to Ernie Irvin right now, it looks like. Well, right now it's about four and a half seconds behind him, and he was staying about two and a half seconds behind Kowicki when he was leaving. Now, whether Irvin has picked up or Earnhardt slowed down, I don't know. Well, an interesting development here in the Haynes 500. Now our Western Auto Race recap as Ernie Irvin is on in front right now but has only led four of the 290 circuits. We've had seven caution periods today. Ten cars currently on the lead lap and we're averaging just a little more than 78 miles an hour. Those that have led include Earnhardt, Dave Major III, Kowicki has led the most laps and now up front is Ernie Irvin. Those that have officially dropped out of the race include Jeff Bodine, Rusty Wallace, and Jimmy Means. Now, the Western Auto Mechanic of the Year standings. Larry McReynolds from Davey Allison's team is on top, just two points over Tim Brewer from Bill Elliott's crew. Andy Petrie from Harry Gant running third in the standings. Paul Andrews from Alan Kowicki's team is tied with Petrie for third, and Steve Meal 
with 141 points, is fifth. And Dave Mater spins down to the second corner, does a 360, nails it. Now he's coming back across the racetrack again. Right, right the leader. Yeah. As he was trying to complete the spin, he drifted down low on the racetrack and almost took out the leader. And this will bring out our eighth caution flag of the afternoon. And someone would race with Kenny Schrader, who is the last car on the lead lap. He is currently running in ninth place, and he was not too far from going a lap down. Here's a replay of the Mater spin coming off the second corner. He and Ted Musgrave in the 55 car, the Jasper engine car, got together. He spun it. He did a great job in doing the 360, but then he couldn't stop the car and comes back right across the race. And there's the leader, Ernie Irvin, the first car in the picture, the uh, orange car. Now the pace car has formed the pack. The pits are open. Here comes Ernie. And we'll go to Jerry Punch for the call. And as we would expect, we will have a four-tire change here in the Kodak pits. The Chevrolet crew, Tony Glover, the crew chief, going to work on the Morgan McClure machine. Ernie Irvin sitting patiently. One can of fuel in, second one going in. And uh, these crews aren't too upset about having a chance to come in under caution. They were concerned on the track getting awfully slippery and awfully greasy. Three on the bottom of your screen, that's Earnhardt's good race Chevrolet crew. Now going to the left side of that car, the Flying Aces, led by Kirk Shelburne, changing left side tires, while Ernie Irvin, further up pit road, has changed all four tires and is headed back toward turn one. Earnhardt is out, and you'll hear the crowd roar as Earnhardt able to make it back to turn one, and Dick Trickle has made it into the back pits. Let's go to John Kernan. Trickle, a great run in the third position will be a four-tire change for Ken Wilson and the crew. Right sides are already on. They swing the jack around and go to work on the left side. Can of fuel going in. He is full of fuel. Now the tire is going on. The left side trickle as we see cars spinning down or coming down the back stretch. Mark Martin is already out. Trickle pitting in on the back stretch. Went from third in several positions back just by virtue of pitting back here. And here on the main straightaway, meanwhile, one of the cars that is going to go a lap down is Darrell Waldrop. They've stopped him because he just wasn't in position when the pace car arrived at the line. And so Waldrop goes a lap down. Here's a replay from uh, Ted Musgrave. Side cam. Now watch this. He's going to go inside the nine car. The nine car is going to go down, and around goes the nine. Boy, it doesn't take much of a bump. You're almost out of control going around the turns anyway. 303 laps completed, just a little less than 200 to go as we were under our eighth caution of the day here at Martinsville. Today, performance cars come in a variety of designs, sizes, and even prices. So do Goodyear Eagles, the world's most successful line of performance tires. There are all-season Goodyear Eagles, new ultra-performance Goodyear Eagles. There are Goodyear Eagles for the classic and for the contemporary. No matter what performance car you own, there's a Goodyear Eagle priced for you. It's another reason we say the best tires in the world have Goodyear written all over them. Red Devil Enamel. You can always count on its durable finish. Harder than ordinary paints, its beauty lasts and lasts. Red Devil Enamel, for the finish of a lifetime. Boy, I had kind of a big year in my garden. So we're going to be making a lot of salads at Wendy's. It'll be a nice change of pace. Taco salads with rich and meaty chili. Deluxe garden salad and a delicious new grilled chicken salad with a breadstick. My daughter Wendy's idea. Made fresh every day because that's the way they're best. It's Dave's Salad Days at Wendy's. Five salads that are fresh, fast, and ready to go. I think I used too much water. If you want to run with the best, don't show up with ordinary tools. These guys certainly don't. 1,600 Craftsman Hand Tools, made in America, guaranteed forever. Glad you could join us for ESPN Speed World coverage of the Haynes 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race. We are set to go back to green as the sellout crowd is still standing, cheering as the green flag comes out, and Dale Earnhardt is at the front of the pack, closely followed by Urban, Brett Bodine, Mark Martin, and Nick Trickle. First time Earnhardt has been out front since he led in the early part. He couldn't be on the first lap and they had their first pit stops. Back in the pack ever since. Of course, he was running the second. Here's Mark Martin going by on the inside of 
Uh, Brett Bodine thinks that's part of it. It's like Bodine has some kind of problem or something. Or he got the car out of shape or something because Martin passed with ease. Yeah, I noticed Brett does. He came off the second corner down the back stretch. Just wasn't running very well. Hey, there's Lafonte. And he, too, is running very well. And Jerry Punch can update us on Alan Kowicki. And we'll do that in a moment. We'll keep an eye on Urban as he threatens to take the lead away from Dale Earnhardt. Earnhardt is on the outside. Urban trying to get to the inside. Dale holding off the challenge at the moment. Yep, he's going to hold it this lap. But he goes up. Now, Ernie's going to come back on the inside. They should be almost in trouble. Dick Crickle spins coming off the turn four. Oh, yeah. That's into the infield in turn number four. The leader did not take the caution flag, but let's see. Meanwhile, NASCAR is watching Trickle, see if he gets his car rolling, so there will be no, no caution. caution flag. Nope. Trickle is moving, and so no caution. Here comes Urban challenging once again Dale Earnhardt, but Dale successfully holds him off. Dale is getting a good grip up in the... We see Ernie get the car sideways down on the bottom of the racetrack. And here's a replay of Dick Trickle's spin. Looks like he got just a little help from the 26 car, Brett Bodine. Who got hit from behind from by the 94 car, who probably got hit because he was hit. So it was a chain <laughs> reaction of events that caused Trickle to spin to the infield grass. Now, we'll continue to watch this situation between Earnhardt and Irvin as Jerry updates us on Allen. They are still working on the Hooters Ford. Alan Kowicki is out of the car, walking around, and apparently it was not an axle problem. They had stripped the drive plate. So Benny Parsons' speculation was correct. They used the cambered rear ends, and at Richmond early in the year, a number of teams have problems with the drive plate. That was exactly what the problem was in the right rear of the Hooters Ford. Once again, Irvin moves alongside to challenge Dale Earnhardt. They're side by side down through the main straightaway. Urban, I believe, is going to get the lead away from Earnhardt. They're still side by side, neck and neck. Ernie's able to go through the middle of the corner better, but Earnhardt gets a great jump off the corner, accelerates back up alongside of Ernie. Once again, we see Ernie go through the middle of the corner so much better, but here comes Earnhardt back on the outside again. Well, the folks in Detroit are saying, all right, is at least those uh, <laughs> concerned with General Motors products because two Chevys are battling for the lead, but coming on in third position is the Ford of Mark Martin. Yeah, while they were battling side by side, he was enjoying that because he was creeping up on them every lap around the track. He not only was watching a good race, but he said, keep doing that, fellas. I'll catch you. And, those, and Ernie did it the hard way, one foot at a time. This is the view that Mark Martin had of that battle for first. This is the roof cam. And you can see how close he is to second place Earnhardt. Mark Martin looks like his car is running as good now as it has all afternoon. Talking to him Friday before qualifying, he said they just never figured out a good race set up here for that battle in Ford. The car's always qualified well, but Looks like he's running as well in the race as he has in a long time, or maybe ever. Yeah, the car was fast in practice yesterday afternoon. Well, he, Brett Bodine, and Sterling Marlin are hoping that they can keep the Ford string line. All three of those Fords are in the top ten. We'll be right back. Here we go again, guys. Wow! I feel good. Yeah, this guy really gets a ride. He's got the auto lights. American Orient Paul, we're guaranteed. I feel good. No matter how far he goes, that's why we've been everywhere. Mega! Yeah! Daytona! LA! Wherever we're going! The Super Yeah! And we're not even tired! Al Unser Jr. knows the corkscrew at Laguna Seca with his eyes closed. Fortunate considering it's a blind turn. Mark Martin knows if he lets someone cross his wake at 200 miles per hour, his car may be doing the Lombada. And Joe Amato knows that at 296 miles per hour, he must pull his chute at precisely the right moment to keep from becoming an astronaut. Apparently, it is what you know. 
riding with Mark Martin, who is in third position in this Haynes 500. He's behind second place Dale Earnhardt, and the leader of this event at the moment, that's Ernie Irvin. Our Speed World coverage is being brought to you by Valvoline. People who know use Valvoline. And by Autolite Spark Plugs, guaranteed for two years, no matter how far you go. Cloudy skies here at uh, Martinsville, but no rain in the immediate area as Bernie Irvin is now stretching out his advantage a little bit over Dale Earnhardt. Mark Martin is right on Dale Earnhardt's bumper. Yeah, he's staying right close to him, Bob, closer than he has been all day. As Benny pointed out a little bit earlier, he seems to be running better now. Ned, those real bird guys with all their stopwatches were correct. That poor car has been fast. Yep. Sure Here's an auto light field summary for you again as we review the entire field as it is running or has been running within the past lap. Positions change all the time, of course, on a short track. It's not easy to get absolutely accurate information, but this is as accurate and up-to-date as it can possibly be. Alan Kowicki, by the way, is uh, on pit road. He was back out of the racetrack for a while, but he's gone on to pit road once again as they try to sort out the problems in that car that led. And he did not get back up to speed, full speed, Bob, when he went back out on the racetrack. He lost a couple of laps, even in 10 laps or so out there, just as not up to speed, but maybe they have got him squared away now. But he's, he was about 32 laps down when he came back out on the racetrack, so now he must be 36 or 37 laps down. And he returns to competition once again. He's 35 laps down. There's Arnold directly in front. Mark Martin about to forward. Dr. Jerry Punch can update us on the problems that have been plaguing Alan Kowicki. Once again, the story is not good. They worked on the drive play there in the right rear of the car. He went back on the racetrack, but as you documented, he did not get back to full speed. Kowicki has complained the car feels like the rear end is tilting in the corners and going in and out, uh, particularly coming out of turn two. The car has a vibration. They brought him back on pit road moments ago, looked at it. Everything seemed to be okay. They checked the wheel for any loose looks at the rear end. Hey, let's go out and ride it out and try to collect some points. Well, Alan Kowicki, of course, is very interested in Winston Cup points. He was fifth in the standings coming into this event, but only seven behind Terry Labonte, who was fourth. And now Mark Martin, once again, is within a car length or so of second place Earnhardt as Urban is still leading. And Terry Labonte was having another great run. He was up about six or seven spots, but about oh, 10 or 15 laps ago, he slowed down some, didn't he, the 94 car? Yeah, it looks like he might have lost a cylinder or something. He just uh, slowed down. He's still running and he's still getting around pretty good, still in the lead lap, but he's uh, certainly off pace from what he was. There's the fourth place car, the Quaker State 4, driven by Brett Bodine. He has been in the top five just about all day. Started yes. third. Brett has had a good run this afternoon. It's not a great run, just a good run. And Sterling Marlin is also having a good run today. He's fifth. He doesn't talk too much about him, but he's run a clean race. I don't see hardly a mark on that car. It's about eight and a half seconds behind the leader. Brett Bodine is about six seconds behind Ernie Irvin. And he's 28th and 14th in the two races here at Martinsville last year. We continue our pan back. We see Darrell Walter and Davey Allison back in full position there each lap down, but then your sixth place car is Kenny Schrader, the Kodiak Chevrolet, who is on the lead lap. Behind him is Bill Elliott, who's a couple of laps down. Bill Elliott made a pit stop, changed four tires, and lo and behold, no sooner did he get through the pit stop than the caution flag came in. There's Bill Elliott. He is 14th, three laps down to the leader. Again, he's also a lap or two down to the leader. And there is Dick Trickle. Okay. And he is eighth, and he is the last car on the lead lap. So that makes Davy Allison in ninth place and Darrell Walker in tenth place. They're each of that Dick Trickle spun. Well, 
15, 20 laps to go. Coming off turn four, there was no caution flag, and that's one reason he's almost a lap down to Ernie Irvin. Yeah, Irvin is creeping up on him a little bit, Denny. He, he was not too far in front of Irvin when he got righted and headed back into competition, but Ernie is gradually creeping up on him a little bit. He's right now just about uh, a second behind Trickles. The trickle would love to see a caution. Putting another lap on Ted Musgrave in the 55 car. Terry Labonte came into, the, came, came into this race fourth in point standings, 123 behind Davey Allison and would uh, like very much to have a good showing so he can move up. He is currently in seventh position, and John Kernan has a report. You got that right, Bobby. He's got an amazing string going. Terry's the only driver to finish in the top ten in all seven races so far this year. At first, we thought he radioed in. He thought he may have lost a cylinder. The car is just slowing down, slowing down. But as he drove by the crew, listen, it doesn't have that familiar sound when you're only running on seven cylinders. Then he thought it could be the battery is going dead. But now he says he's checked out the battery with the gauges. The battery is the battery is fine. It just seems the car just keeps slowing and slowing. Terry is very perplexed. He says he has no idea what the problem might be. So they're just going to have to ride it out. Well, at one point about 50 laps ago, as he was in the top 10, he stood a chance of gaining some real ground in the Winston Cup points because he was only 10 behind Bill Elliott coming into this race 1,023 to 1,013. But look, all of these guys, Allison, Gant, Elliott, Labonte, and Kowicki have had their problems and are not among those contending for the lead this afternoon. The guy who is in the lead is Ernie Irvin, whose best 1992 finish has been an 11th at Rockingham. Back with more of the Haynes 500 after this. to members and guests of the 501 Club coming in April, Maiden America. Saturday, April 4th, join us for NCAA Basketball, the Final Four. Follow the winners to the championship game Monday night. It's time once again for the 501's annual beach party. It all drinks up Tuesday night with the return of Captain Rowdy. Wednesday, it's Ladies Night with the Men's Best Chess Contest. Thursday, don't miss more live entertainment. The Rigatones are back. Friday, live, Jamaica's very own Infrared Rockers. And Saturday, get ready for the Miss 501 Swimsuit Contest. Don't miss the sound of trade-off April 17th and 18th. April 22nd is Secretary's Day, and the 501 celebrates with Office Olympics. Coming April 23rd, Georgie Baker and the Boys. April 30th, it's time to rock, roll, and reminisce with the Deltones. Join us for sand, music, and fun at Jonesboro's only party club, the 501. ESPN's Kentucky Derby Special. A lineup of pre-derby races, features on derby favorites, and analysis on how the derby will be run. Enjoy the Kentucky Derby pre-race special, Saturday live on ESPN. Back at Martinsville, and all of a sudden we have a battle for the lead as Irvin has serious challenge from Dale Earnhardt. It's like Ernie Irvin's brakes have went away or something. I don't know exactly, but his car is slowing and slowing, and, and he's quick. The car's running down the straightaway because he's able to keep up with Earnhardt, but there goes Dale by, new leader. Yeah, I think Irvin has slowed a little bit because not long ago, he was about to lap Dick Trickle, and Trickle has moved on out about two and a half, three seconds in front of him. Well, the fans here on the main straightaway have their hands in the air cheering for Dale has the lead from Ernie Urban once again. And there is Dick Trick, or rather uh, Mark Martin, running a very close third. And he's just been sitting there watching those two as they do battle up there. He hasn't gotten too far behind since they last stopped. On the roof cam on Martin is Balvin Ford. You see how many 114 miles an hour he's running this past now as he has any time this afternoon. RPMs as it has all afternoon. Questions. They said basically they told Ernie just to remain calm, take it easy. They don't plan on pitting until about 40 laps to go in this thing, so they get at least 100 more laps 
on these tires. They just stay calm. We're there. We've got a good race car. Let Earnhardt go. We'll run this, run our race. And when push comes to shove with 40 left to go, we'll put fresh rubber on and go after them. Well, that's interesting strategy. Yeah, we do have several laps to go in this race, about 133 to be exact. But still... But with just 40 laps to go, if they're going to start with just 40 laps to go, I mean, one can of gas, but the one, you don't even have to have a whole can of gas to do that. So I think a guy, Ernie, almost done. He's yes. off the pace. He has. He's lost second position of Mark Martin. He's ripped a flange plate or something. He's coming in. Urban is coming in. Jerry, he's headed toward you. While the car comes down to the the Brewer, very surprised. They have not been able to... And apparently he is trying to take off. They are going to push the car. He's trying to put the car in gear and take off, and the wheels just spun, and the car did not move. Now they are going to take the car behind the wall, so the crew is about as surprised as we were to see Ernie Irvin suddenly slow and come behind the wall. So once again, speculation has to be that maybe something in the rear gearing, an actual problem, maybe a drive, but like we saw with Alan Kowicki, could be a problem. Gentlemen, having the lead is not the place to be today. We've seen Alan Kowicki leading and having problems, and now Ernie Irvin right there. Something happened. Yeah, he lost one of his rear axles, and that's what caused the car to steer with the rear end like that way. He immediately backs off the gas, and that keeps the car going straight, but Mark Martin went by on the outside to take away second spot. Well, he didn't uh, have the problem while he was leading, but he certainly led many, many laps, and now he, too, is beat the wall. So, now we have a battle between Ford and Chevy up front. It is Chevrolet leading with Ford and Mark Martin running second. Turn on the outside pole sitter. Now the lead. Benny, you mentioned earlier about the caster that they're building into the rear end of these cars. I've never heard of that until just recently this year. And with the problems we had seen earlier in the year, I think Brett Bodine had some problems at Richmond. And now here today, we've seen a couple of cars. Not saying that that's exactly what happened to these cars, but certainly indicates that that's what has went wrong. I'm sure that a lot of them are going to take a second look at that concept. We'll be announcing the winner of the Gillette Halfway Challenge during our Talladega telecast next Sunday. Entry count being accepted for the next race. You call 1-900-436-7000. It'll cost you 95 cents if you have to be 18, or you can send your name and address and telephone number to the Gillette Halfway Challenge post office box 1868 South Hackensack, New Jersey, 07606. And the 55 car, Ted Musgrave, is slowed, and you know, it's almost like he has the same problem, the way the car's reacting, like he has an axle shaft problem or some type of problem. Well, I mean, I, some of our spotters have told us that the right rear brake line is broken on the car, and the car has no brakes, so... Uh, that makes sense. Yeah, that's why I would be going slow, too, Ted. I'd be going a lot slower than that if I were Musgrave. Now he's coming in on the back stretch. Let's see if he can stop. I guess he, he's going behind the wall. I hope he can stop. Let's because, hope so. Uh, if somebody walks out in his way, he will... Uh... Well, they have to hide, kind of grab the car and stop it, but everything's okay back there. We'll jack it up and take a look at it. Earnhardt leading at Martinsville. He has five victories on this racetrack. Most recent was this event last year. He's the defending champion. Now he is putting a lap on Terry Labonte. Who Labonte now has dropped back to the what, seventh position, still running seventh. Still running seventh, but now a lap down. So only six cars now in the lead lap. Take a look at again at our outer light field summary. We run down the entire field. And who's still in and who's still out? Buddy, we're, we're about equal with it. We're equal. There's some radio communication with someone bleeding through on our equipment. They were about equal. So it sounded like Mark Martin. It did sound like Steve Meal and uh, talking to Mark Martin. Trying to keep Mark's hopes up that he could too could catch that three car and take the lead here this afternoon. Well, they still have one more pit stop to make. And there again, how are they going to play the strategy? Is someone going to stop early? There's Dick Prickle off the pace. Now, as he lost it, it looks like he's lost an actual flange or something. All of a sudden, the See, car watch him go up there and almost run poor old Dave Marcus. And Labonte. Oof. Very 
really slow down the front straightaway. You know, you guys talked in the uh, opening part of the show about how technology has caught up with Martinsville. And we've seen a lot of uh, mechanical problems, it seems like, here this afternoon. And of an unusual manner, too. And uh, the technology that is letting some of these cars handle better with the camera that they're building into the, the rear axle housing might be coming to uh, catch up with them here. I think the rough racetrack, you know, this concrete down the bottom and, the, and how bumpy it is down there, I think that would be tough on these Oxford Chefs. Here's Davey and Darrell. They're not on the lead lap, but they are battling. Some of our spotters have told us that's exactly what happened to the eight car with axle housing problem. Drive plate, axle shaft, whatever. This is the battle for seventh position, and Jerry has an update on Ernie Irvin. Unfortunately, gentlemen, the speculation was indeed correct. It was the exact same problem that Ellen Gwicki had. The drive plate, the right rear of the Kodak Chevrolet of Ernie Irvin has been chewed away. They have pulled the axle out. They are working on the car, but it will cost him a lot of valuable time here in the pits and certainly a shot at victory. I started to say a moment ago, how are they going to play the strategy now? Just, you know, 116 laps to go. Is someone going to stop early, change four tires? They're going to run long and just put in a little bit of gasoline. I would think they could run long. I think so yeah, too. You can't afford to stop under the green here. If you do, you're going to lose a couple of laps, and you got to. I think you got to stay out there as long as you possibly can. He is about to lap the fifth place car of Ken Schrader. And Davey Ellis, the points leader, is in the wall coming off turn two. Some heavy damage to the Avalon Ford. He went in there big time and is up against the outside wall coming off of the second corner and bringing out caution number nine. And, and Schrader is trying desperately to stay in the lead lap. <laughs> and Schrader oh, almost sideways. But Earnhardt beats him back to the line. He also beat Rudd back to the line, put both of them a lap down. Now we'll see if Davey Allison what, what, is okay. We seems to be moving around in there. Schrader, Schrader didn't like that situation with Earnhardt at all. There is Davey Allison as we see him go into the wall. Apparently, I don't know if he cut a tire down or had one to go down or what happened, Bob, but I think the tire's flat now, but whether it's flat before he went into the tire, don't know, but he's hit it hard. There is And Davey Allison's and ribs are still hurting from that blow at Bristol, so he didn't need to hit that wall from up in the second corner. Jerry punches down in the Earnhardt pit. Jerry? While the crew waiting for Dale Earnhardt to come down for his service, just 113 laps remaining here in the Haynes 500. The sixth in the bottom of your screen, that is Mark Martin, of course, the Babylon Ford. Top of your screen, our previous leader, Dale Earnhardt, the Goodrich Chevrolet. Right side tires going on the Earnhardt car. They're already down to the left side. The jack by David Smith. Kirk Shell running the left front tire. Left rear tire going on. Likewise, Martin, left side tire. Earnhardt is down and away. Martin still on the jack, and we watch for Mark Martin to come off the jack and begin to move down pit road. Here he comes, headed back to turn one. Be very careful not to violate the 35 mile an hour speed limit down pit road that stripe there at the end of pit road that they can begin to accelerate. Here's what Ned was talking about a little bit ago, but Schrader telling Earnhardt, hey man, why you let me have that lap back? <laughs> Under our ninth caution because of a crash in turn number two involving Davey Allison. We'll be back with more in just a moment. It was 8 o'clock in there, right? Yeah. My truck wouldn't start. And the lights worked, but the engine wouldn't turn over. So I figured it must be the starter, right? Well, I went to AutoZone. They said, let's test it. Turns out it was okay. So we tested my battery and found that it just didn't have enough juice to crank it. Now get this. I didn't have to spend a dime, because they even charged my battery for free. Get out of here. That kind of service? Hey, you just can't beat it. ESPN's America's Cup 92. Dennis Conner launched a surprising comeback, but Bill Koch has his sight sets on defending the cup. Plus the Battle of the Red Boats, New Zealand against Italy for the right to be called the Challenger. The America's Cup, the Defender and the Challenger Finals tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock Eastern, live on ESPN.
Getting set to go back to green once again after an accident involving Davey Allison. By the way, he got out of the car under his own power and has walked into the infield care center being checked over. I'm sure Dr. Punch will have an update on Davey Allison when it becomes available. In the meanwhile, here's the green flag as we resume competition with Earnhardt out front, followed by Mark Rodine, Sterling Marlin, and Terry Labonte. That's exactly how the race started. Darrell Wolf on the inside, Earnhardt on the outside. <laughs> But now we're 400 laps into the race, and Darrell Waltrip is a lap down to the three-car, trying desperately to get it back. Darrell is currently being shown in the fifth position. He's the last car. So Darrell slipped, Earnhardt gets in front, and Mark drives up on the outside of Darrell Walter. He's a second place car. The blue and white car in the back behind the tree, he's a second place car. Darrell lets him go. Unless he's got, he's going to let him go. I think he's going to let him go in some of the field. Yeah, I think he, he gave it his shot and said, hey, I can't get back in the lap, so I'll just let him go and ride here. I'm, we're still running in the top five. Maybe something will happen to somebody else like this. And we just saw Sterling Marlin at the top of the screen. He has taken over the third place spot from Red Bow 9. So we got Chevrolet forward, forward, forward. But Chevrolet leading. But Chevrolet leading. And that is the spot to count more than anything. As we saw as he raced back to the caution flag just a few laps ago. Uh, Dale can, shall we say, protect his position with the best of them. Well, he certainly can. And, you know, we saw earlier in the year, I think it was at Daytona in the 500, that some of the four drivers worked together and let, uh, I think, Davey Allison let Jeff Bodine get back in the lead lap when a caution came out. Here's a battle for between Sterling Marlin and Brett Bodine. Something's wrong with Sterling Marlin's car. He just moved over down the back straight away. Brett Bodine pulled up on the outside of him. Now he might have it going again. Anyway, they're doing some good racing. While they do that racing, let me finish the story about uh, the Fords working with each other to try to help. Now, Sterling gets that position back. Trying to help each other, but Earnhardt has an opportunity to let a Chevrolet stay in the lead lap, but chose not to do it. Now, he's in the lead lap with three other Fords. Here is the completion of lap number 400. 100 laps to go. for you. This is a race for third spot. The blue car, 22, Sterling Marlin, Maxwell House Ford, he's third, fourth place car. The Quaker State Ford of Brett Bodine. Meanwhile, Earnhardt is the leader, and Mark Martin is second. And only those four cars on the lead lap. Sterling Marlin's car seems to really slow right in the center of the corner. But then he gets good traction off the corner. You see Darrell Walt is staying right there with Martin. Earnhardt not that far ahead. Well, I might see an opportunity here in the say, hey, let me pick the pace up a little bit. I might be able to pass these guys and get back in the lead lap. You don't see very often. Saw a record going down the back straightaway as the race was going on. Good car this afternoon. It doesn't appear he's quite as good as Earnhardt. Mark Martin finished third at Darlington this year. That's been his best finish of the year. Only two top ten finishes for Mark this year. His other one was at Rockingham when he came home in sixth position. But it is Earnhardt that's leading the Haynes 500. GS500E. It hustles and still leaves cash in your pocket. There aren't any fax machines or PCs to help you at this job. And your career path is largely determined by the mood of your heart. So why would anyone choose to work up here in the mountains? Maybe 
It's the fringe benefits. Oil. It's the lifeblood of your engine. That makes your oil filter your engine's most vital organ. That's why Fran keeps going the extra mile to make the best protection even better. The Fram Extra Guard Oil Filter. Unique glass fiber paper stops more dirt than any other filter for the best protection ever. Fram Extra Guard, American or import, is an extra lease on life. We got it, we got it, we got it, we got it, you 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 got it. we got it, we got it. If you've got to have it, there's no better time to get it. We got it, we got it, we got it, you got it, you got it, you got it. The Suzuki, we've got it. Flexible financing. Come and get it. Dale Earnhardt is leading the Haynes 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race. Stop number eight on the circuit for 1992 at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. Earnhardt is leading in the GM Goodrich Chevrolet. Looking for his first victory of the 1992 season. And Mark Martin is running in second position. The four car, Ernie Irvin, is not in third place. He is several laps down. He's got a good race car, but he has some mechanical problems. Had to spend 30, 40 laps in the pits curing those problems. He's back. Trying to complete some more laps. And if he can stay out there, he is going to gain some points on by, on Davy Allison, say, start to say Bobby Allison, Davy Allison, and NASCAR with the cup point with the crash hard. What was that, 30, 40 laps ago, Ned? Yep. He is out of the race. I don't think they can fix that car. So if he, these fellows will run more laps than David. They'll finish in front of him and gain more points. But Ernie is pretty far down in the points, but he, he's having another problem right now. Ernie Irvin, as we talk about him, slows going into turn three one more time. But yes, practically everybody in the field is going to gain on Davy Allison today. Yep. Allison crashed out of this race a few laps ago, made heavy contact with the wall coming out of turn number two onto the back stretch. After he got out of the infield care center, John Kernan talking with him. Well, we caught up with Davey Allison, who's just been checked out at the infield care center. First of all, Davey, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, John. Uh, I just re bruised my ribs a little bit, but everything's okay. You know, I felt the tire start, the right front tire start to get a little soft. So I backed off and let Daryl go, and it just let go all at once with no warning. That's Davey Allison, who's a little bit sore, but he appears to be fine, Bob. Davey out of the infield care center and okay after a crash that has eliminated him from the Haynes 500. Well, Waltrip is still trying to get that lap back. He's within a car length or so of Dale Earnhardt. Well, he looks inside of Dale. Yeah, he's been working on him, looking for every opportunity. Bernard's got an awfully good race car. I, I'd be surprised if anybody's going to pass him in the next 30, 40 laps because his car is good. Maybe not as good this afternoon as uh, Alan Kowicki's or Ernie Irvin's, but those fellows had problems. Bernard hasn't had any problems. Martin continues to run in second, carrying the board banner at this point. Will their streak end at 11 consecutive NASCAR Winston Cup races dating back to Charlotte of last year? It appears as if it might come to an end this afternoon. But there are a couple of other Fords that are right there to uh, step in if something happens to Earnhardt, namely Sterling Marlin in 22 and Brett Bodine in the 26. Walter once again trying to get by the three car, trying to get that lap back. He's trying to keep her on the bottom of the race, but right? Earnhardt's letting the car go up, running the high groove, trying to take it easy on the brakes, easy on the tires. Evidently, it's getting a little slick down on that bottom side. They know the car's been running down there all afternoon. And it's hard to get traction coming off the turns, especially after your tires get heated up. But Walter certainly giving it the old American try. I think this is what Mark Martin wanted. I think he wanted Darrell Walter to get up there and race Earnhardt as hard as he could and try to let Earnhardt get those tires slippery, get, start going away a little bit because he wants to gain. There he is. He's gaining. He's closing up on Earnhardt just a little bit. Earnhardt is getting such good traction coming off the turn, but he is just gaining maybe a six inches a lap or maybe a little more. Yeah, 
have if they're racing with each other. I thought Darrell was going to get it, but uh, not yet. They're still side by side as they go into turn number one. And Mark Martin closes it right on the back bumper. Now they're coming up on some other traffic up there. Let's see what that's going to do for them as they run side by side. That might work to earn Mark's advantage. Jimmy Hensley is just ahead in the 66 car, and so is Greg Sachs. Hensley pulls to the inside and allows both of them to go by. That was a nice move by him. They just let those guys go on. And by the call, the Virginia Jones. down. We're talking about the 66 car by Jimmy Hensley. That's the camera from inside. Jimmy Hensley, Hensley's Phillips 66 car as he looks at the front three cars. 60's running 16. He's 12 laps down. Walker has worked so hard that he's so nice. Yeah, I don't think he's touched turn hard yet. They've been running side by side for what, about five, six laps? But indeed, Mark Martin has closed in on both of them. Perhaps his strategy was just as Vinny said. Let Darrell get up there and race with her heart. category about 8500 that time so he's getting it all he's got and Daryl Walter's getting it all he's got he's just about half and he's working up to where he's got a half a car length lead on Earnhardt now going into turn one he wants to get up there before he gets to Greg Sachs so that uh, Earnhardt can't box him in behind Sachs but that's exactly what Earnhardt wants to do is box him in behind the car number 41 and I think that's what happened yeah. nope Sachs moves up. Yes, In front of Earnhardt. And this is going to allow Darrell to definitely get his lap yep. back. Yep. <laughs> How about that? But Earnhardt says, okay. In that case, I'll try to put you down another lap. Well, there are 59 laps to go in this race, and it's still anybody's. Earnhardt, Martin, and others. We'll be right back. Professional service, a friendly face. That's your Big A Pro. Big A, the size that keeps your car running right. The time has come for the cordless power roller from Wagner. It's so quick and easy, it can cut painting time in half. So get your hands on a real value, because the value of Wagner keeps on rolling. We can. Can I drive? No. Oh. Thank you, doctor. I'm not a real doctor. But if I were, I'd recommend ligament for occasional muscle pain. Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going. Back at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. It is still a battle between Daryl Walter and Dale Earnhardt. Now, the this is for the lead. This is uh, Earnhardt trying to put Waltrip a lap down. Daryl got it back a few laps ago, but Earnhardt, once again, is right alongside Daryl. And it's just reversed. The last time we saw them, Earnhardt was on the outside and Waltrip on the inside. Now they've switched. They've got Daryl on the outside, Earnhardt on the inside. Dale is getting a great jump on the outside, a good bike. Darrell's getting a pretty good bite out there as well. Pulls up, pulls up alongside of Dale. And now Earnhardt has him a lap down again. Yep. 
Now that battle between Earnhardt and Darrell Waltrip, what effect did it have? Well, take a look at a big A auto parts on track interval. We timed five consecutive laps, 433 through 437, and the interval between Earnhardt and Martin, you can see it was exactly reduced by half. There was one second interval between them on lap 433, and on 437, Martin had reduced the interval to one half second. And Jerry Punch has a comment on Dale Earnhardt. Gentlemen, it's a little bit of food for thought. We've seen some drive shaft plate problems in some of the cars, in fact, four or five cars. And one of the reasons we've seen it, what I'm being told out here, is they're running a lot of camber in the rear end, about two and a half degrees. Now, according to some of the stats we've been able to collect up and down Pitt Road, there were about six cars who began today with two and a half degrees of camber in the rear end. Of those six, four have already had problems. The two that have not had problems thus far but still have that much camber, the three car and the 26. Another Fram field summary for you. Mark Martin has successfully passed Darrell Waltrip and put him a lap down. Marlin, there's Derry Cope in the 10 car. There's Marlin. So Sterling Marlin gained a great deal on that ballot as well. He's pulled away from Brett Bodine and now just three or four seconds behind Mark Martin. In fact, then he is uh, three seconds. Exactly. You can look at that and say, you know how it is. Earnhardt, now with exactly 50 laps to go in the Haynes 500. 450 are complete. Will Earnhardt win? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Professional service. The red, blue, and white. A friendly face. It's a good sign. Your big A pro. Keeps your car running right. Nice to know he uses top quality big A parts. Big A. The sign that keeps your car running right. Someone to depend on when you need to depend on your car. Let Tommy Mohawk beautify your home with the top performer carpets from Mohawk. Backed by Tommy's 10-year total performance guarantee. Crafted with American pride in a rainbow of luxurious colors. Featuring the state-of-the-art fiber technology of DuPont Stain Master Extra Life, which resists stains and wear. It starts beautiful and stays beautiful. The top performer carpets. Mohawk beautifies your home. Available at Barton's of Jonesboro, Highway 63 Bypass in Browns Lane. Hello, I'm Steve Shannon. At Jokes Chrysler Plymouth, we have one and only one ambition, to be the best. And Jokes Chrysler Plymouth offers you a great selection of new Chryslers and Plymouths, with financing available and low monthly payment programs, plus the latest in safety features. Hello, I'm Steve Meredith. When you drive away in a new 1992 Chrysler or Plymouth, you'll be assured of getting the best warranty in the industry. Advantage, Jokes Chrysler Plymouth, 920 G Street in Jonesboro. There's a storm brewing on ESPN. Saturday Night Thunder. It's a night of lightning quick action featuring live USAC midgets and sprints. Saturday Night Thunder on ESPN. Back at Martinsville, Virginia, where Dale Earnhardt leads the Haynes 500. The sun has come out. It's been overcast all day, but now the sun is beginning to peak through the clouds. And, uh, now, what will that do to some of the chassis out here? Because it's been over. We see Earnhardt wiggling. It's slow. He's definitely off the base. Earnhardt is off the base. Yes, he, he is. He's dropping and back. And Mark Mark takes the lead. As we have seen now three times this afternoon, the lead is not the place to be. Kowicki, Urban, and now Earnhardt. Jerry, what's wrong? As I said just a minute ago, Bob, he is one of those five cars that had a two and a half degree camber setting in the rear end. Three of the five that already had axle problems now make it four out of five. The only one left on the track and has not experienced a problem yet. The 26 car at Brentwood Island. They are telling me here in the Goodrich Spitz that it looks like it's probably an axle or drive plate. And Earnhardt obviously getting slower and slower. And he'll probably just try to ride this out, fellas, rather than come in and change it with uh, less than 50 laps to go. You can see the frustration on Richard Childress' face. 
now Mark Martin leads for the first time in 1992. And the nice thing about it for Mark is he only has 40 circuits around this half-mile racetrack before he puts a win on the board. Almost identically, Mark Martin, I mean, Bill Earnhardt and Ernie Irvin, the same spot in the car, did almost exactly the same thing. Remember when both cars almost spun from off that second corner. You know, what, what's happening now, these cars are only pulling on one wheel. That's why they're slipping and sliding and kicking. Kyle Petty's hit the wall, come off the second corner. In just about the same spot that Davey Allison has a fire, under, fire the under the car. Yes. Errol Waltrip is racing Mark Martin, trying to get back to the ca caution flag first. Come on, Kyle Petty, get out of that thing. Mark. Martin leading, but now there is fire under the Kyle Petty car. It is still burning quite a bit. There now, Kyle sticks his head out of the mellow yellow Pontiac and begins to climb out. He's having Come difficulty on, baby, doing something. There. And look at the car, just continues to burn. A lot of fire. And now Kyle successfully escapes. That's one of the falls. keystone. That's one of the keystone pit crewmen over there getting helping Kyle Petty out of the car. That is one of uh, Wally Dollenbach's crew members who came across the track to help Kyle Petty get out of his blazing race car. Who is that in the, with the red hat? Is that Jeff Bodine? Is that, that looks like Jeff Bodine with a fire extinguisher. Well, these fellows will always come to help each other anytime they possibly can. Remember, Kyle still has steel in his leg from that accident at Talladega last year. There he is sitting on the wall appears to be okay shaken obviously meanwhile those on the lead lap are making pit stops here on the main straightaway only two pits are busy mark martin and brett bodine in the service and brett bodine wins the race car. out because he only puts on two tires that may be a smart pit strategy for brett bodine the quaker state crew with only now uh, 37 laps to go you can see how still there is a little bit of fire under the mellow yellow Pontiac and the crews there with the firefighting equipment, but there is still blaze visible. Kyle is out of the car and appears to be okay sitting on the pit wall. We're at Martinsville, Virginia in the Haynes 500 and we'll be back after this. dirt goes, you know it's up to no good. Especially when dirt goes for your car. So when it comes to stopping dirt, okay. more people go with Fran. Because no air filter traps more dirt than Fran. It's the number one way to stop dirt in its tracks. Uh -huh. uh -oh. oh, no! <laughs> oh, yeah. Fran, the end of the road for dirt. These are test tracks for Craftsman Tools. It's where we prove Craftsman can take the torture even guys like you dish out. 1,600 Craftsman hand tools. Made in America. Guaranteed forever. On the first day, ESPN Home Video created Amazing Sports Bloopers 1. Pleased with the results, it then created Amazing Sports Bloopers 2. And then on the seventh day, it rested. Just about to go back to green flag racing at Martinsville, Virginia, next Sunday, live at 2 o'clock Eastern Time, Sunday, May 3rd, from Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama. It's the Winston 500 coverage here on ESPN. And uh, ESPN fans watching this race, and it gives us an opportunity to mention and congratulate the fact that ESPN won five Emmy Awards this past week, one of them going to ESPN's Speed World team for technology innovation. And among the other things that was saluted, the telemetry that we have on Mark Martin's car. Mark Martin is second to Brett Bodine as the green flag comes out for the first. Bodine goes high in the turn. Oh, mercy. And again, a leader has problems, and now Mark Martin. Could Bodine be experiencing the same problem?
problems that all those other cars have had. Remember, Jerry told us that he was the only other car that has uh, has this problem or potential problem. He's definitely got some type of problem. But meanwhile, there's a second place car. The blue 22 is Sterling Marlin. He is now second. Mark Martin is the leader of this race, and Sterling Marlin is running on second. Oh, Martin and Daryl Walter got together down in turn four. Daryl backs out and let Mark go. Close moment for the leader, Mark Martin. Darrell was trying to get his back back. Well, gentlemen, it appears as if the Ford winning streak will continue. They're first and second. That's why they pay me the big bucks, because I can always predict <laughs> what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, you want to get a raise out of this deal. <laughs> we just didn't have the best opportunity, and they, well, they yeah. had their opportunity. They did the it, AAA did. I had to run for my money, and that's all you can hope for. <laughs> time around we'll have 25 laps to go whoops make that completing 477 that is not your problem you can't to see that. meanwhile mark martin has this thing in hand 23 laps to go if he can just keep it going and watch where the other drivers are running in our fram field summary red bodine is still out there running but he is way, way off the pace. But he's still in third place. Still in the big I do believe it's the same problem. Yep. Oh, he almost goes up, missed the wall that time. He got too much speed. Man, oh man. That car is all over the racetrack. Jerry, what's the problem? Well, Brett's not really sure what the problem is. He said when he went into the corner on the restart, the car wouldn't turn. He said he had trouble steering. He thought he had a tire going down. Now, as you all know, if there's an actual problem, sometimes with one wheel pulling, you can't turn the car. We saw a couple of guys nearly spin. Donnie Richardson here in the group, Laker State Pits, trying to find out. They're just going to have to ride it out. They think they may have a tire going down, but then again, it could be Axel. So it's, uh, with 20 laps to go, they have no choice to try to ride it out. Well, Dale Earnhardt has now gone a lap down. He still is in fourth place, but not for long. Darrell Walter just took that away. Darrell Walter now is in the fourth. Earnhardt is a lap down, and now Brett Bodine about to go a lap down as Mark Martin comes up on him. You know, it's going to be interesting to see Brett Bodine and, and Dale Earnhardt racing for that third and fourth spot. <laughs> That's yeah. cool if both those cars are going. Yeah. Now Darrell Walter has moved into third as he moved around Brett Bodine. So now only two cars in the lead lap. This is Mark Martin and Sterling Marlin. And who is our Western Auto mechanic of the race? Steve Reel from Mark Martin's team. Congratulations, Steve. I think he was fifth in the point standings coming into this race, but he'll pick up some valuable points in the battle for the Winston, the Western Auto Mechanic of the Year competition. Mark Lees in the Valvoline Ford. Sterling Marlin second the Maxwell House Ford. This is the best run. Mark told me, as I said Friday, that they've had trouble getting around this race track. This is the best that he's ever been here in Martinsville. So he said, one of these days we'll win. We'll run good for 500 laps. We'll know what it takes. And I think after they leave here, they'll know what it takes. There's second place, Sterling Marlin. You can see the distance separating first and second. Sterling running back there with Harry Gant and Alan Kowicki. Next time by, 15 laps to go, just 15 more. This would be a good, strong run for both these guys. Mark Martin needs a good run. Also, Sterling Marlin needs a good run. Now, the third-place car is right there behind the leader. There are only two cars on the lead lap, Martin and Marlin, and third place is Darrell Waltrip, right behind Mark. One lap down, right. And the fourth-place car... There's Terry Labonte, number 94, the Sunoco. And Lonnie Labonte once again with an excellent performance. And it looks like he'll keep his streak alive of finishing in the top ten, the only driver to finish in the top ten in every race so far this year. And I'll tell you, he's really going to gain in the point. Yeah, he race. is. He was 116 points behind coming in in fourth position. Allison Gann and Elliott will all finish well behind him. Bill Elliott is in 10th place right now. Harry Gant is 7th. Seven. So he's 7th. Seven. Yeah. So he's not going to gain that much on Gant and Elliott. But Davey Allison's guy is going to take it on the chin. And how about Labonte will be in a Ford next Sunday, they say, at Talladega. And that, if that happens, 
then that means he will have been in three different makes of car in the 1992 season. And Mark Martin by Dale Earnhardt one more time. Meanwhile, Earnhardt has passed Brett Bodine in their race. So Earnhardt is now fifth. Brett Bodine is sixth. Chad is coming up on him. I believe Harry would be racing them for a position. He is uh, two laps behind, and both of them now are two laps behind, so Gantt should get both of them. Team owner Jack Roush watching to see if his driver Mark Martin can pull off his first victory of 1992. Ten, ten laps to go. Doyle Ford gives Mark the signal. Ten more. Boys are driving. That's the signal you most want to see those double hands. Ten laps to go after 500 laps around this thing. It's almost over. You're right there, Harry. Again, goes by Earnhardt. Take that spot away. Earnhardt is in fifth position. Two laps down. Well, right now, Ganson fifth. He just passed right. Earnhardt, so Earnhardt's in sixth spot now. But it does indeed keep Harry in the thick of the points battle. He was 86 behind Davey coming in, and Allison will finish somewhere around 26th in this race. He, of course, is already out, having crashed in turn number two. Boy, it's amazing how things have turned around in this race the last 200 laps of the race. This has been an excellent race in terms of surprises. Mark Martin probably no more surprises. He's probably the most surprised guy in the ballpark. <laughs> oh, a spin in turn four. Rick Mast creating a huge traffic jam. Do they throw the caution flag. Do Let's see, Darrell Walton's going to try to beat Mark back to the line. No, nope. he, he didn't make it. It was close. But Darrell failed to get the lap back. Now there's only two cars in the lead lap. And there's only five laps to go the next time by. So they're going to have a couple laps of green flag racing. Does Mark Martin come in and pit and get a track position? Or does he let Sterling Brown go in the back and put on four tires? What's going to happen, Bob? I don't believe Why Mark do you ask me? Pit. No, I don't think either one of them will come in. The second That's place car right. will. Sterling Marlin will come in. He has nothing to yeah. lose. Yeah. yeah, okay. We'll see if Mark does. Nope. nope. No, he stays out. Now, Sterling will go in the back pit. See, because Mark had to make his choice. Yeah. Now, Sterling has nothing to lose. Nope, they're going yeah, green well, next yeah. time around. One lap to go, so Sterling won't. Or will he? No. No, no I don't think so. No. He, he couldn't get back up in time to catch back up to him. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, interesting. If it had been one though. more lap, yep. I, would, I yep. think Sterling would have went in. Yeah, I think you're right. It would have been interesting to see what happened. But we are going back to green, and we will have four laps of green, hopefully. Mark Martin making sure the tires stay warm. And Darrell Waltrip still trying to get his lap back, hoping he will still be able to do so. Pontiac pace car heads for the pits, and here comes the green. Side of the racetrack outside of Daryl Walter and Bill Elliott. And I'm telling you, Sterling got hung up on the outside of Daryl and just can't get by. Three laps to go for Mark Martin. Man, this is this is terrible. Morgan Shepard's car really smoking back in the back. Morgan is being shown in the seventh position. Now Daryl backs off and lets Sterling go ahead, but now he only has two laps, two laps to catch Mark Martin. If Mark Martin holds on and wins, it'll be his sixth career NASCAR Winston Cup victory, third on a short track. His last victory was the last race of 1991 at Atlanta. This will be the first time he's ever won at Martinsville, and the white flag is out. One more lap around this half-mile racetrack that has been exquisitely prepared as per usual by track owner Clay Earls. Here is Mark Martin as we ride with him with a half a lap to go. Mark Martin wins the Haynes 500. 
did his left hand now waving at the crowd. He didn't have his right hand waving to us, unfortunately. And there is a happy crew, to say the least. Steve Meal, Jack Roush, and the boys celebrating Mark Martin's first win of the 1992 season at the Haynes 500 here at Martinsville. We'll be back to talk with him in Victory Lane after this. Stay with us. Demonstrate the superior color of new Kodak Gold 400 film. Just open a box. It has the richest, most vivid color available in a high-speed film. New Kodak Gold 400. Fast film. True colors. The Ford winning streak in NASCAR Winston Cup competition continues. The GM teams had a shot at it, but in the end, it was the Ford of Mark Martin that prevailed in the Haynes 500 at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. Our Speed World coverage being brought to you by Suzuki. Your Suzuki dealer has the ride that you've been waiting for and the financing to get it. And by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Light. Well, a big celebration in Victory Lane. Here's our Kodak Gold interview. Jerry? And a happy Jack Roush team in Victory Lane. Jack Roush standing beside his victorious driver, Mark Martin. And Mark, congratulations on an outstanding effort. Well, it was really a great run. And I tell you what, I want to thank Goodyear for putting us on the best race tires I've ever been on. Uh, they were great today. Never gave up. A uh, car worked beautiful. And, uh, you know, I just thank Valvoline for hanging in there with us and, and Folgers and uh, you know, we brought it home. You know, it was a good day for us. The whole team has kept their chin up through uh, times when things weren't working like they should. And if they had let that, if that, if they would have let that get them down, we wouldn't have won today. And I'm real proud of them for being that strong. That's why you've got Mark Martin and Jack Roush and this team together because they're all winners, even through adversity. And today, it's in victory lane. Bob. And as you take a look at the final points, or rather the final standings in the race, we'll uh, get some closing comments from Ned and Benny here. Guys, that was a great race. It uh, had a lot of surprises, that's for sure. Certainly a lot of surprises, and you never knew who was going to prevail. Until the very it didn't end. look like the lead was the place to be for a long time. You definitely did not want to be in the lead because that was a kiss of death getting up there. There you see the final results, finishing in 31st and 32nd position, Rusty Wallace and Jeff Bodine. Quickly, the point standings in the quest for the cup. Allison remains on top, followed by Gant, Labonte, Elliott, and Kowicki. We'll see you next Sunday at Talladega. This is Bob Jenkins from Martinsville. So long, everyone.